on the support vector machine, it is like fairly confident. How many of you are, are confident with the support vector machine algorithm? I'm talking about hard margin support vector machine, not the soft margin one. If you come from the condition and Okay. 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 That's that's fairly good number. All right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, now we can do it. Thanks. Okay. So I assume that you are you are you know you know support vector machine. Okay. So the basic support vector machine. Okay. So the hard margin support vector machine algorithm that works for the data which is linearly separated, right? Correct. So yes. but uh, but what about the data uh, which which does not uh, which is not linearly separated? Okay. So because of some noise, some noise, some noise, we could be, we could be having some data within the within the gamma much. Generally, when you have data like this, you are able to see my screen. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let this be the separator, and this is the W. Okay. So and. and this direction is W, okay, and this this line corresponds to W transpose x equals zero, okay. Let the this is these two are the margins for suppose let's say, okay. This is W transpose x equals to gamma, and this is W transpose x equals to minus gamma. Okay. So now, now, uh, so for us to for us to apply apply this hard margin algorithm. Hard margin support vector machine algorithm. The points has to be can be can be either either on this line, okay. So basically, they cannot be they cannot be in between. So they can be here. So all the all the minus points they can be this side, and they can stay on this line also, okay. And all the all the plus side points they have to be here, okay. And then, uh, basically basically they cannot be they cannot be lying in between, okay. But what about because of some noise? Okay, if, if there are some points that lie in between, for example, if the minus point lies here, okay, or and then the plus point lies here, okay. So, so they do not satisfy a condition of uh, W transpose x x y y greater than or equal to gamma. They do not satisfy this condition. Okay. So now, now for this particular case, for this particular case, uh. And then you, you can you can even you can even have the points that are entirely misclassified. So for example, if you take here some point could be like minus here. Okay. So these points they they not only satisfy this condition, but they'll be misclassified by our algorithm. So any any point to the right side, okay, they'll be classified as plus right. So the actual level is minus, okay, but then but then you'll, you'll, you'll be classifying it as plus one. Okay, so so Basically, these are the points. These are the points that that do not satisfy our our hard margin algorithm. Okay. So, can we this 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 can be considered as noise? This can be considered because of noise or outliers. Okay. So, to will we will we, will we, will be uh, developing one more algorithm, soft margin algorithm, by to include these points also. Okay. So, and then the way the way we we do that is. Generally, the point should be satisfying this. Okay, so we can we can make this gamma as one. Okay, so W transpose for, for some other W. Okay, so for W transpose x y y greater than or equal to one. This is the this is this is the general condition. Okay, so but then if they do not satisfy this, then what's going to happen? W transpose x y y. Okay, so it you know it can be like it can be like less than it can be less than one. Okay, so to make it greater than or equal to one. We'll be we'll be introducing a bribe, okay? So we'll be we'll be introducing a bribe bribe called this say, okay? So so by by including this, okay, we'll be making we'll be making each and every point uh each and every point on this 
each each and every data point to be satisfied this condition. Okay, but let's say Understand. let's say the, if, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's here how do huh? how do you decide margin? Let's as we we need to have maximum margin, right? Yeah, we we want maximum margin, correct? Yes. Correct. Uh, we know, but another thing. One assumption uh, here: margin is one or maximum margin. So if it is no, maximum margin, margin is, so how do I uh, decide that? See, the margin is not one. Okay, so so generally, when you, when you go to the hard margin as support vector machine, okay, so so the margin is yes. going to be the the margin is going to be the distance distance between this point and as well as this point. Okay, so the, the so the first yes. point on this there, point, yeah. So here, their margin is one. No, here here also the margin, margin is not exactly equal to one. Okay, so the margin is not one. Okay, what we are trying to do is what we are trying to do is see, we 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 fix the we fix this W transpose x to be equals to one. Okay, so we we are we are just mentioning W transpose x i y i should be equals to should be greater than or equals to one. Or in other words, W transpose x i. Okay, this this modulus value it should be greater than or equals to one. This is what we are trying to say. We 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 are not saying that yes. the margin is equals to, uh, margin margin is equals to one. Okay, so we can always find a gamma. We can we can we can sorry not the gamma. We can always find a W, irrespective of what the data is, irrespective of what the what the what the what the margin is. We can always find a W. Okay, so that satisfies this condition. Okay, so here. So, sir, uh, yeah. There, there uh, our main co main uh, uh, condition was. Nearest point. We need to find the nearest point from our uh, separator, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you come to the uh, soft margin, so how here soft margin don't have any nearest point because we are. Uh, so how many point you are? If you on if you do the maximum margin, then how many point you want to uh, allow to have at, uh, to come inside uh, margin? Okay. So when we talk about this, uh, see you 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 consider the case of W transpose x. Okay, so you 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 look at the case of for for here for here to find the margin. Okay, you will find you will define in W using using the soft margin algorithm. Ah, uh, so what you do is you you look at the case of W transpose x equals to one, or W transpose x equals to minus one. So in this particular case, the y should be equals to one. In this particular case, y should be equals to minus one. Okay. So if you find that point, let's yes. say let's say this is a point, okay. So the corresponding the corresponding uh, minus point you'll be finding here. Okay, so the distance between these two, these two is going to be a gamma. Is is going to is not not gamma. It's going to be two gamma. Okay. And so that means I need to perform hard margin then come to the soft margin. See, actually, actually you'll be performing so, soft yeah. margin only. You'll be performing soft margin. Okay, you'll be performing soft margin. You'll be finding your W. You'll be finding your W. Okay, so after finding your W, okay, after finding your W, you'll be finding any point, any point if it satisfies this condition or not, any any ith point if it satisfies this condition, okay, corresponding to this x i, corresponding to this x i, you'll be you'll be finding you'll be finding some point here corresponding uh, on on this W transpose x equals to minus one. Okay, so you'll be you'll be finding the so if you do the W transpose. If you do the W transpose x i equals to one, that means my length is one. So that means my distance is one. See that you, you, the distance is not equal to one. Just W transpose x equals to one. The distance is not equal to one. The the margin is not equal to one. Okay, just just the just the W transpose x value is equal to one. Okay. Oh, I didn't get it. We are scaling so, it. Uh, we are scaling it. After that, we come up. W yeah, yeah. We we we, we, so we just we just scaling it. That's it. Yeah. So if you are scaling it, then margin also will decrease. No, the margin is not going to decrease. The margin is not going to decrease. The margin depends upon these two points. The margin depends upon the points. Okay, so the margin depends oh. upon the points. Okay, so. So let's let let me just tell you this, okay? So you you will always be taking this W transpose x equals to one, right? So and then for different data sets, for different data sets, you'll be having you'll be you'll be getting different W star, right? That satisfies this condition of uh, yes. that satisfies this condition, correct? Correct. So yes. there there the margin is going to be margin is going to be proportional to one by modulus of W whole square, okay? So 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 the margin, the margin gamma, okay, the margin gamma, it's going to be proportional to one by one by modulus of W whole square. 
so basically for the for the data set which, which has a which has a more margin whatever w shy you're going to get that's going to have least length okay clear okay, but, but sir here gamma is a yes gamma is, gamma my, is uh, the margin here point, gamma, right? is, yeah. gamma is the margin yeah 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 so 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 the point the point so, which you have which you have on this line on on the on that boundary line yes. yeah yes it is uh, taking the nearest point so but near, then if you come to the uh, soft margin how do you decide that nearest point because you want to allow some points so how do you allow so that is one main concern see the same thing you will you just be looking for these points okay you will be talking you will be forgetting about other points okay so, so these these points you not be considering okay so you will just be looking so, for these points you will just be looking for these points but that, whenever you're training when you are doing training so uh during training time uh, this point also be important right i don't know so this point which, will be, which point will be excluded and which point will be included you need not have to worry about because, all that okay so if you, if you, I need if you to know if you want gamma, to, gamma is if you want point, to, right? gamma is the nearest point gamma gamma is the margin there gamma is the nearest point how do you decide margin the nearest point Okay, see when when it comes to when it comes to hard margin, it's it's going it's going to be the nearest point. Okay, so here when you when you're trying to find margin, okay, when you when you're trying to find margin, the only way you'll be finding margin is you have you have to you have to find a find a point point on the on the station boundary. So in this particular case, it's W transpose x equals to one, and then and then the corresponding projection. Okay, so 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 the projection or you can say the least distance point on on to this W transpose x equals to one, minus one. Okay, so so this distance is going to give you the margin. Okay, is this clear? Because, uh, in short, short margin we say that uh, the gamma is the nearest point. So according to so that, don't forget, the forget, the forget about nearest point. Okay, forget about nearest point. All right, forget about nearest point. It's simple. Okay, so then so how do you decide margin? I just I just told you I, I just told you how how you how you decide it you 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 find a point you find a point which satisfies the double transpose x equals to one okay, you find that particular point okay and then and then correspondingly corresponding you, you just you just find a closest point here okay so so the closest point which satisfies the double transpose x equals to minus one the distance is going to give you the margin this distance is going to give you the margin okay. But another thing is W is my one, right? Norm of W is one. We know. Norm of W is not one. Norm of W is not one. Norm of W is not one. Okay. okay. See, okay. when you when you have here previously, previously when you when you had W transpose x equals to gamma. Okay. So here 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 norm of W is equals to one. Okay. But but when you make this W transpose x equals to one case. Okay. One 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 case. Okay, so we are we are we are restricting we are restricting this W transpose x x to be equals to one. Okay, by doing so we we are we are we are allowing W to be of any length. That's why that's why I told here the margin is is going to be inversely proportional to one by one by modulus of W whole square, right? Okay, so so when 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 the when the W is going to be one, then this equation does not make sense. The W will not be equals to one. Okay. When you when you're taking this condition, when you when you're taking, I mean, when you're considering this condition of uh, W transpose x equals to minus one, and then the W transpose x equals to one condition, the modulus of W, that length of W, it's not going to be equals to one. Okay. Clear? Okay, it's a little bit, little bit it's not so that much. I don't know. You think about it, okay? So previously, while trying to solve for while trying to solve solve for support vector machine algorithm, okay? So we had we had too many constraints there. Eh? So we 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 did this trade off, okay? So so we converted this W transpose x equals to gamma, okay? To to W transpose x equals to one, and then and then like we are we are trying to find the W that has the least length and that satisfies this, okay? Okay, that Clear? I understood, but. When I come to the soft margin, I'm confused to how do I decide. So See, when you when you're talking about when you're talking about margin there, okay, all you have to remember is this one. Okay. Gamma divided by norm of W square. Yeah. So but here gamma is my nearest point. So then also gamma. Yeah, not the nearest point. Yeah, not the nearest point. Okay. So gamma is not the nearest point. 
so for the for the for the hard margin support vector okay case case that makes sense here here it does not make sense okay so when you when you have here so how do you decide uh, gamma then i just told you to uh previously you, you you take a point here you take a point here on this particular line this is w transpose x equals to one okay so you, you, you take a point you, you take any point among your data set that satisfies this condition okay so this is w transpose well, x equals to, to do the minus maximum one. margin right you need to have margin maximum margin so yeah you, you want to here once you have the w once you have the w your margin is fixed once you have the w your margin is fixed okay once you have a w for a, for a oh. given data set the margin is going to be fixed okay, okay. once okay. once you once you have that a data set the margin is going to be fixed okay okay w decide my uh, margin yeah yeah okay. the w is going to decide your margin that's why i told you uh, this this gamma margin is going to be is going to be inversely proportional to this uh, modulus of w whole square okay 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 so okay, so you find a point that satisfies this w transpose x equals one you could be having some points here in between okay all these points are only ignore okay you could you could be having any points in okay. between you won't be forgetting you, you will not be taking those for margin you'll be getting this point and, and then corresponding point you'll be finding here right here here this point let's say this point is xi and then like this point is something like some some x dash uh or so like x i dash okay so 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 this distance is going to be the margin okay 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 how is it clear yes yes okay so so that's what the all right okay so where were we we are talking about this w transpose x i y a plus psi a right so so this is the you know this is the bribe they pay okay so the bribe they pay so so, so these points which do not satisfy this condition forget about this gamma okay so even even though the gamma is a margin what we are trying to do is we are trying to have this w transpose x equals to 1 and w transpose x equals to minus 1 okay and we are trying to find the find the least value of uh, i mean the least length of w possible that satisfies this condition okay now now what we are trying to do is by by including the by including the bribe even though some points do not satisfy this condition of w transpose of x i y greater than or equal to 1 by including the bribe we are making sure 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 that it satisfies this. so whatever bribe you are paying this bribe should be greater than or equal to 0 okay so so the bribe cannot be negative okay so now now what what do you want to do we want to okay, so uh, we want to minimize this uh, we want to minimize we want to minimize the length of the whole square and then and then as well as uh, we, we 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 cannot we want to put we, we want to put some constraint on bribe okay so we, we we cannot let let bribe to be anything okay so we have to be we have to be putting putting the constraint on the bribe okay so this also we have to be sum of i equals to 1 pn okay so what whatever bribe you are paying corresponding to that you have to be paying some price okay so 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 the c decides that price what price you're going to pay okay so if the c is zero that means whatever bribe you pay it it does not matter okay so so in that particular case the w value is going to be equal to zero okay so so the w star the solution is going to be equal to zero okay basically we want to minimize the length just like before but then since 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 we cannot let let bribe value to be anything okay so we want to put some constraint on the on the bribe so so that's why we'll be including the c c should be greater than or equal to 0 generally it should not be equal to 0 okay if, the, if, the, if this bribe is infinity if the bribe value is in, infinity so so then the only option we'll be have so not the bribe value if the c value is infinity then the only option we'll be having is we cannot let the bribe we cannot let the bribe to take case because even if you take even if we let let some small some some small value of bribe to take place the overall value is going to go infinity okay so when c is infinity there is no other option than than for you, for the bribe to be equal to 0 when 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 no points are paying bribe then there's nothing but hard margin hard margin support vector support vector machine okay so here here what are the constraints you have just like previously you have this constraint w transpose x so y yeah one question sorry Yeah, yeah. So if they we need to pay bribe, so why mm -hmm. C is infinity? What? 
no no what they trying to say is if c is infinity if c is infinity we cannot be paying right okay okay so if c is infinity we cannot be paying right that's what i'm trying to say this is just a boundary boundary case scenario that i'm just saying c equal 0 yes. and then like c equal to infinity c is near to 0 then if c is near to 0 then what happens is you you you, you can be you can be paying how much of bribe you want it it will not be it will not be it will not be you know affect affect in this equation much so so but suppose suppose let's say c is equal to 0 what but we have to pay bribe yeah what happens is each and every point will pay bribe each and every point point will be will pay bribe then okay so we'll discuss about that uh, i mean we'll, we'll get that intuition through equations itself okay so just hang on a bit So but if, if before we if c is infinity then sigma i is zero that is bribe is zero yeah 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 the bribe has to be zero okay. okay we'll discuss that in a bit okay clearly why why that's a that's a scenario okay but uh, our equations of this one w transpose xi previously it was just w transpose xi by greater than equal zero since we are including the bribe so the equation has to be w transpose xi by a plus xi greater than equal to one okay And then what's what's the other condition? Whatever bribe you are paying, it should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So now using using that, you can get the Lagrangian equation. Okay. So the Lagrangian equation is going to be this one. Okay. For for this inequality, you'll be having alpha i, and then and then for for the for this psi i. Okay. Since you want the equation to be less than or equal to zero, you we'll just be doing this minus of here. Okay. So for 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 this minus psi i, the The constant with with which you multiply is going to be this beta i. Okay. Now, now what's what's going to be what's going to be our our main main criteria? Okay, we want to maximize this with respect to alpha and beta, and then and then we want to minimize this with respect to the w and then the the bright. Okay, so this is the primal problem. This is the primal one. Okay, the corresponding duality is it's going to be here here first. First you're going to do the maximization, then you do the minimization. But in the duality, you first do the minimization, then you do the maximization. Okay. So for a particular function, even if we solve a primal as well as a dual, the solution is going to be same. All right. So now to solve this, now now first first we can solve for this minimization. This is the dual problem. In the dual problem, you, you first try to solve for the minimization, and then you apply the maximization. Okay. For applying minimization, since you want to do the minimization with respect to w and d, e. What do you do when you want to do minimization? You just take the derivative, the derivative of partial derivative, and then equate it to zero. When you do this for this particular function with respect to the derivative of dou w equals zero, you're going to get this equation. Okay, so the derivative star of alpha comma beta is going to be equal to sum of i equals one alpha i x a by a. This is this this can be written like this. Okay, then if you take this dou l by dou psi the break the 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 other parameter, if we have differentiated, partial differentiated with respect to that, we are going to get this equation. Okay, so you differentiate this equation with respect to this drive, we are going to get this, which is going to mean this alpha i plus beta i is going to be equal to c. Okay, so so the c is a hyperparameter. Okay, I mean the c value has to be decided by us. Okay, c is a hyperparameter. Ah, uh, which means that what's the cost? What's the cost you are going to pay for pay for including price? Okay. So this alpha a plus beta is going to be equal to c. Okay. So by substituting, by substituting this w star, okay. By substituting this w star, this this w star equation in the Lagrangian, what do you get is what do you get by substituting that here? What do you get is you get this one. Okay. So the maximization with respect to alpha and beta. And then the constant here is alpha plus beta equals to z. Okay, so this alpha i plus beta i is equal to c. Okay, but for but for overall for all the points you can treat it as like alpha plus beta is equal to c one. Okay, so where where this is a vector, this alpha and beta is also vectors. Okay. Alpha is going to be equal to alpha one, alpha two, and so on, alpha n. Okay. Similarly, beta is going to be equal to the vector okay. beta one, beta two, and so on. Beta n. Okay, so this alpha plus beta is equal to c. Is, this c c is going to be this vector and one vector. Okay, so basically this c it's going to be equal to c c c and so on. 
the nth time. Okay, so this is going to be the n cross one vector. All right. So this is going to be this is going to be an equation. Okay. Now the good thing about here is we don't have any beta term there. All right. So now when alpha plus beta is equal to c, that's your condition. The other way you can rewrite that is okay. So the alpha value will should, should always be lying in between zero and c. Okay. So this you can rewrite that as by by you know by forgetting about beta for a mean well, we can rewrite this as maximum of maximum with respect to the alpha since you do not have the beta down there, and then you'll be having zero is less than or equal to alpha is less than or equal to c. Okay. So by based on the beta value, this alpha value will change. Okay. And then you have this equation. Okay. So this one you want to maximize since you have your x transpose x, it it, it is kernelizable. Okay, so that's the only thing. Now, now when you're talking about alpha here, this since since I told this this c is a, c is a vector. Okay, basically whatever alpha you have, that's going to be like within these constraints of zero to c. Okay. Until now, are you able to follow? Okay, I mean, what you have to? Yes, sir. You do not have to worry about this. Uh, how how we how we arrived at the actual derivative, but then from from here onwards, based on this equation, based on this equation, will we'll be coming to solution. It will be coming to the the what is the conclusions. Okay, so we have here for W star is going to be this one. Okay, so if c is equal to zero, okay? if c is equal to zero, if c is equal to zero. Okay, I told you uh, in this particular case what what's going to happen when c is equal to zero. Now let's see here. When c is equal to zero, alpha is going to be equal to zero because alpha value lies between zero and c. When c is zero, then alpha has to be zero. And when alpha is zero, the equation is going to become zero. And then this alpha transpose whatever value is this, but at the end of the day, it has to be multiplied by alpha transpose alpha here. So this also is going to become zero. So in, if c is equal to zero, then you w star. Okay, the solution to your the solution to your soft margin, soft margin support vector machine, okay, algorithm it's going to be equal to zero. Okay, now when c is equal to infinity, okay, when c is equal to infinity, then it's going to be hard margin because when you have c as infinity, you cannot be paying any price. You cannot be paying any price. So so that's going to become the hard margin. All right. So the uh, when 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 c c is in between in between the zero and infinity. That is like when c is like some finite value, then we can actually try to solve this. Considering the W star and psi star as solution for primal and alpha and theta as solution for DL, okay, we can solve this. The these are the complementary slackness conditions. The way you arrive at the complementary slackness con condition is uh, okay. This has to be equal to zero. Okay, I mean this alpha I multiplied by one minus W transpose x by a minus i. That has to be zero. This has to be zero. Okay. In in the Lagrangian equation, whatever this equation I have, the inequality, pre previous inequality conditions, those has to be equal to zero. Okay. So those are the complementary slackness conditions. Okay. So this has to be equal to zero. When this has to be equal to zero, either alpha has to be zero, or this has to be equal to zero. Similarly here, either the bribe has to be zero or beta has to be zero. Okay. So, so these are the these are the possible scenarios. Okay. Now, as we told, uh, these are the possible scenarios. Just by looking at the complementary slackness condition, we can just we can just look at like if alpha is zero, if alpha is zero, alpha plus beta is equal to c, which means beta i has to be c. Okay. So since alpha is zero, beta has to be c. Okay. When 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 beta is some constant. Okay, I told you here beta i this multiplied by the bribe that has to be equal to zero. Okay, so since since the, since the beta i is not equal to zero, the bribe has to be equal to zero. Okay, so the bribe is zero. Okay. And then and then when the bribe is zero, then what does that mean? This particular point x i it is it is like uh, so this 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 is like you know correctly classified, correctly classified. Actually classified and then like it's like within the margin. So that that means all the <coughs> all the points are like correctly classified. 
yeah when alpha i is equal to 0 when when alpha i is equal to 0 then then whatever points you have they are like correctly classified so what are going to be this correctly classified points this region okay so all this region and and in this region uh, so all the points should be plus 1 and here it should be minus 1 okay clear for the case of alpha i okay. alpha equals to... yes sir yeah? so can we just go up uh, once okay. just one slide up so uh -huh. here in this uh, equation 1 If alpha i is zero, yeah, equation mm -hmm. one for complementary stack. Mm -hmm. The if alpha i is zero, then mm -hmm. the rest of it need not be zero, right? Yeah, yeah, it need not be zero. That's why I mentioned either this should be zero or this has to be zero. Uh, but so it's if, possible that it can be zero. It po it's possible that it can be zero, but then it need not be okay. okay? okay. Under what? Under is are there any specific conditions under which it will become zero? Is there any meaning to that? Or? Yeah, yeah, there is a meaning to that. There is a meaning to that. We'll we'll come across it. Okay. There is a meaning. Okay. So, uh, the other scenario is this. Uh, the second scenario is when alpha is in between zero and c. Okay. So alpha is in between zero and c. Then in this particular scenario, since alpha is between zero and c, then beta is also go going to be between zero and c. Okay. Since alpha plus beta is equal c. Okay. Here yeah, alpha is not zero and alpha is also not equal to c, which means beta will also be between somewhere around zero and c. Okay, so here beta is not zero. Okay, since beta is not zero, psi a will be equal to zero. Okay, here 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 this prime will be equal to zero, and then since this alpha is not equal to zero, this 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 part right, this equation has to be zero. Okay, since since alpha is not equal to zero, this this equation has to be zero. And then we concluded since beta is not zero, the prime has to be zero. Okay, so this prime will be equal zero, which means the equation is going to be one minus W star transpose x y y equal zero, which means the W star transpose x y y y is going to be equal to one. Okay, what does this mean? This means that they they exactly lie on this 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 line. Okay, W star. The W star transpose is equals to one. This this is the line, and then this is the W star transpose x equals to minus one. So so the points has to be lying lying either on this line or this line. Okay. Are are there any English names for alpha and beta? Which one? The alpha and beta? No no. We yeah. don't have any. Like English for names. epsilon, we have bribe. Yeah. So that's there. There they're calling it bribe because because we are, you're, you're actually paying something. No, no, I understood that. Yeah, but is that similarly? Also. No, no. Here, here, here. This alpha and beta, they, they, they just like included. They do not have like any any English names. Okay. They, we are we are just using using it just for just for so this. Because if I, if I, I mean, are uh -huh. these not are these notations going to be consistent irrespective of what uh, textbook I look at? No, no. They they need not be consistent. Okay. They need not be consistent. Okay. So okay. it's it's just like for for our representation case, right? So, but what you can what you can assume is, uh, but they don't have any meaning per se. They must have some meaning, right? Yeah, they have meaning. They they have they have meaning when you when you combine alpha alpha with this equation, they have meaning. So, uh, what I mean is like when you combine this alpha i, one minus w transpose x i by i, okay, minus this prime. Okay, if this is equal to combinedly combinedly this, this alpha i has meaning. The value of alpha has meaning. Okay. The so similarly it goes for this beta. Beta is multiplied by this side. Okay. This is the right. But then this this beta i and alpha i they do not have like any specific names for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when when alpha lies in between zero and c, whatever points here in this particular case you are not going to pay right. Okay. When you're not paying bribe here, here also, here also it means that that point is correctly classified, okay? And then, and then like it's it's like satisfies this condition of W transpose x y y is greater than or equal to one. In this particular case, it's exactly equals to one, okay? Since it's exactly equals to one, it's going to it's going to lie on this uh, separating lines, okay? All right. So the last case is this alpha i is equal to c. When alpha i is c, okay, then beta has to be zero. Okay, when beta i is zero, the the bribe need not be zero. Here also, I'm just saying need not be zero, which means it can be zero also. Okay, need not be zero. Okay, 
So and 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 in this particular scenario, alpha i is equal to zero, right? which means one minus stable transpose x a by a minus this psi a it has to be zero. Since this is not zero, this definitely has to be zero. Okay. And then in this scenario, the prime is going to be equal to one minus stable transpose x a by a, okay, which can be written as equal to zero. Or in other words, the W transpose X of Y A, it can be less than or equals to one. Okay. This is clear. Since 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 this is like greater than or equals zero, okay, which means W transpose X of Y A is less than or equals to one. Which means uh so this condition of alpha equals to C, it's going to include those points, okay, which are incorrectly classified or or which are like correctly classified, but you know, they fall like within this margins. Okay, where the margin is less than or equal to one case, that is this W transpose X A Y A. Okay, so it's it it can it can it can either be like negative. Okay, if it is negative, this value is negative, then that's like incorrectly classified. When this is like positive, that is if it is like in between zero and then the one. Okay, so which means. Means it's it's going to be correctly classified, but the margin is less than or equal to one. Okay, is this clear? This point. When W transpose X A is negative, that that means it's it's incorrectly classified. Okay, and then when the W transpose X A is is between zero and one, it's correctly classified. But what do we want generally? Previously, we want this W transpose X A Y A to be greater than or equal to one. In this particular case. It's 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 not it's not greater than it's not greater than equals one. It could be like in between zero and one. Okay, clear. Is this clear? Hello. Yes, sir. So, sir, yeah. in this yes, sir. in this case, all the points points will lie between the margin, or some of the points will lie. They can they can lie on the margin, and then and then like they can lie like in between also. Okay. okay. Some some of the points may be correctly classified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So if you look at the other case, uh, here until now, until now we looked at it based on the alpha comma beta values. Okay. Now based on the W transpose X Y Y also we can look at it. The W transpose X Y Y is less than one. Okay. Which means the W transpose X Y Y plus Y has to be greater than or equal to one. This is less than one. Okay. So in this particular scenario, the prime is going to be greater than greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so the prime no not just greater than equal to it has to be greater than zero, because since it's like less than one, this definitely has to be greater than zero. When this is greater than zero, beta i beta i is going to be zero because beta i minus of this prime is going to be should be equal to zero. This is not equal to zero, which means beta i is zero. When beta i is zero, alpha 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 is going to be equal to three. Okay, that's a, that's the first condition. The second condition is this second no the second condition. Second possible scenario will be this W W star transpose X A Y A is equal to one. The the, the points which are lying on that bound. Okay. In this particular case, the 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 bribe right, the bribe is going to be one minus W star transpose X A Y A. Okay. Since it's like exactly exactly equal zero. Oh sorry. Since it's like exactly equal to one, this bribe can be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So here here bribe can be zero zero or 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 it can be greater. Okay. So in this particular case, the alpha is going to be between zero and zero. Okay, since since the bribe bribe is greater than or equal zero, okay, so the beta i value it can be it can be anything between zero and zero. When when beta when beta is is anything anything between zero and zero, then the alpha i also can be any value between zero and zero. The the last scenario is this W star transpose X Y is greater than one. Okay, so in this particular scenario, okay, if if, if this is like greater than one. Okay, this equation since 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 this is greater than one, and this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, this overall equation will always be less than zero. Okay, if this is less than zero, then alpha ah uh, what's a what's a complementary stiffness condition? Alpha multiplied by this has to be equal to zero. So since this is not equal to zero, alpha has to be zero. When alpha has to be zero, beta has to be equal to c, which means the bribe has to be equal to zero. Okay, so you won't be paying a you you won't you won't be paying a bribe here. Okay, and then you here in this particular case you'll definitely be paying bribe. Okay, so you'll pay bribe here. You pay bribe here. 
in this particular case, you may be paying bribe. May be paying bribe. Here, in this particular case, you not pay bribe. Obviously, we will not be paying bribe because the WSO transfers X Y is greater than one. Okay, so it's it's like you know, this this point is correctly correctly classified, and then and then like the margin is also higher. So we won't be paying any bribe, right? Okay. Can you go up, sir? Yeah. So. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So when the points are on supporting vector, in that case, bribe may be paid. I mean, points may pay bribe. Is that correct? When when the, when the points when the points are are, are on support vector. Supporting machine, vector. W okay. So for for the for the vectors to be the supporting vectors, right? So then in that particular scenario, if they pay bribe, if they pay if they, if they pay bribe, then then definitely they will be there. Okay. So for for if you if you remember this hard margin support vector machine, okay. So the the points will be, will be will be the support vectors only only when alpha is not equal to zero. Okay. So for all those vectors where, where the where the alpha is not zero, okay. So it will be those are going to be support vectors. Okay. Okay. And and the vectors the 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 points the points for 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 which the for which the alpha will not be zero is definitely these points which lie which lie in between. Which lie in between here? Okay, here. If you have any points here, and and even if you have some points here, which are like incor incorrectly classified. So, for example, if you if you have plus one point here, and like minus one point here, even those will be support vectors. Okay, but then if you have the points lying on this, lying on this line, mm -hmm. or on this line, then they may not be support vectors. They may be or may not be support vectors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so that that. You know that actually summarizes this, the support vector machine part. Then we'll move on to the bagging. Okay. So, so the bagging as well as the boosting. Okay. We'll try to cover it. Uh, okay. So, what does bagging does is generally when you have error, they could be like two types. The error could be of two types. Either either it could be because of underfitting or overfitting. By underfitting, what you do is the structure you assume is not, is not correct. So you you assume a very simple structure. You you assume simple structure. For example, in this particular scenario, it's like sinusoidal, okay, or or the higher order higher order one. But then you just you just assume it to be linear, okay. So the structure is simple. Structure is simple here. So because because your structure is simple, okay, your your model will not be correct. Your model will not be correct. So basically, you're doing this underfitting. And then in the overfitting case, what you do is, so you you try to fit each and every point. You try to fit each and every point here. So since 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 you're trying to fit each and every point, the model which you're going to get, it's going to be very complex. So it's going to be very complex, and and then this 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 model is going to be very sensitive to outliers. Since since it's going to be uh, in this particular scenario, you're going to have very very high variance because your your model is going to uh, vary much. Okay, so because of this noise. So you are going to have very high variance, and then in this particular scenario, you are going to have bias. This bias is because whatever model you are assuming, that 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 structure itself is like entirely very simple, and that's not the the structure is not not the accurate structure we expect. So in this particular scenario, you are going to have high bias, but when you do this overfitting, you are having high variance. So to 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 overcome this high bias and then the high variance, we will be using this boosting as well as the The bagging models, okay. So, in the uh, now when we come to this bagging, okay, we one way to do this bagging is this bootstrap ag aggregation, okay. So here in this bootstrap uh, bootstrap aggregation, what we do is, okay. So we try to in this particular in this particular scenario, this bagging or not, it reduces the variance. Okay, so it reduces the variance. Okay, so you'll be taking a model that overfits. You will take you'll take a model. You'll take a model that overfits. Okay. So. Sir, can you can you yeah. clarify the meaning of bias here? Here. Confused. So here, what this bias means is like it's kind of like uh, so. For example, okay, so consider 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 the model to be 
the the actual the actual model let's say like your f of x let's say like it's going to something like x square x square a x square plus b x plus c okay but then the model you assumed is something like f of x equals to a x plus c okay m x plus c or a x plus c okay so here here your your whatever 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 model you assume okay so that itself is like wrong so you are you are you are having this bias view of the data so that's called this is high bias because because your structure itself is going to be like entirely wrong here so that's going to lead to like high bias so what what order model you are going to get that's not going to that's not going to like behave properly like so that's called is high bias okay Uh, excuse me one question so how do we math how, how do we mathematically huh? how do how do we mathematically yeah how do you mathematically find out determine whether a model is overfitting or underfitting when you are do okay so uh, mathematically when you want to find out so so when you, when you so I, have have model, a, I have a model and a data set mm -hmm. right Have the training data set and the model. How do I know whether the that model has underfitting or overfitting? What what parameters can I look at, or what should I compute to figure that out? Or... Okay, so for so for for underfitting case, okay, so if you look at this training error as as well as the as well as this this test error, right? Yeah. So the training error. So underfitting is like low. Low bias and high variance, right? No, no. The underfitting is going to be high bias and low variance. The underfitting has high bias. Okay. So you look at the test error. Okay. So if you are overfitting, if you are like overfitting, if you are overfitting and then underfitting, if you are, if you are overfitting, then then your training error is going to be very close to zero. When then then your training error is going to be very small. Okay. And then when you are doing underfitting, the training error is going to be high. Okay. And when you are overfitting in the test error, the test error is going to be high. Okay. And you, when you are doing underfitting model for test error is also going to be high. So when you test error as well as it as well as your training error is high, you can you can you can you can assume that your your model is like underfitting model. Okay. And then if you are like overfitting, it perform it performs well well on this well on this training data because you are actually fitting fitting each and every data point. Okay. But then when you go for testing, your model not perform well. Okay, so based on this, you can decide. Okay, thank you. This is very helpful. So now, okay, now coming to this bagging. What do we do here is okay. So we take a model. We take a model that overfits. Okay, so when you when you take a model, uh, sir, can you differentiate bias and variance? I wish to that so. We have here the 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 variance like what what a predicted value you're going to have, okay. So so that's going to like fluctuate like very easily, okay. So because of the noise, because of the noise. So for example, depending upon the data, okay. So let's say like you have a you have a model of like n points, okay. So it's like ten million points. Okay, you mean sir, if we have a high variance, then the fluctuation is high. Yeah, yeah. So so, so the fluctuation in the fluctuation with respect to the Predicted value of phi that's going to be very high. Okay, and bias, sir. With respect to the bias, it's it's you could you could think of it like the mean itself. The the mean of the predicted value itself is going to be like, uh, okay. So consider 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 like this is the this is the x test. Okay, so the actual y test. Let's say like it's this is the y test. Okay, the actual value. Y test actual value. Okay, and then consider it like uh, so when you when you're going to When you're going to have this high variance, okay. So, for example, if you're if you're having model one, if you're having like let's say model one, model two, as well as like ten models, and so on, like ten models, okay. So, and then what 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 about these ten models predicts? Let's say like this like y one, y two, y three, and so on, like uh, let's say like you have y four, and so on, and so on, let's say like you have y ten, okay. So then, when it's going to have this high bias. And it's going to have the have the high bias. Okay, so the expected value of this y y i okay minus y test if you do okay, so it's not going to be equal zero. Okay, when you have this, when you have the when you have the high variance. Okay, 
So the expected value, the expected value of y i minus the y f, the actual y f, okay, it will be equal to zero. But then this value, the expected, the expected value of uh, y i minus y f whole square. We do this. This is going to be higher. This is going to be very high. Okay, so you could see here what what values you are you're going to get y one, y two, and so on. This y ten, they are like very fluctuating. So when you do this y one, y one, y a minus y test, okay, whole square whole square thing, and then like for different models for for different overfitting models and models, if you just take the variance, it's going to be like very high. But then for underfitting models, the expectation itself is going to be wrong. Okay, the expectation itself is going to be wrong. So for example, what do we mean by this expectation is? Look at here. You have here this uh, okay, the same line I'm drawing. So we have here. Let's say like this is this is your white test actual actual value. We should be predicting it here, okay? But then because of the high bias, let's say your points are going to be y one, y two, y three, y four. Y five like that. So so when you when you're going to have these points, this expectation is going to lie somewhere around here. Okay. So the expected value it's itself is like far here. Okay. So the expected value of y i this y test is 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 like is not equal to the actual y test. In this particular scenario, the expected value is going to be the same. Okay. So when you, when you do the expectation of y i, it's going to be equal to y test, but then the variance is going to be high. That is the fluctuation of y value is going to be high. The predicted y value is going to be high. Okay, is this clear? Yes, sir. Uh, so, what you have written here, like expected value of y i minus y test, mm -hmm. is not equals to zero. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that value is going to be high. Yeah, and above yeah. that uh, is expected value of y i minus ex ex sorry, expected value of y test is equals to zero, right? Yeah, yeah. This is for the this is for overfitting model. If the, if the expected value of y a minus y test equals zero, that means it does not have bias. Okay. Yes, okay, sir. Okay. So then, uh, and then, uh, but then, if we looked at this expected value of y a minus y test whole square, okay, that fluctuation it's going to be that means it has this five high variance. Okay. Now, in this bagging model, what you do is you take a model that overfits, which means the bias bias is not high. Okay. So here the variance is high. The variance is high. Okay. You want to you want to reduce this variance. Okay. You want to reduce this variance. So the way you do that is, okay. so you do the bagging. You do the bagging of data points. Okay. The bagging of data points. The way you do that is, you do that with replacement. Okay. So you do you do that with replacement. So for example, when you have your this T is going to have this T is the What's in the data set? That's going to have endpoints. Others, please. Okay, so the original data point, the original data set, it's going to have endpoints. Okay. The D models you're going to, you you you're going to build in the bagging. You're going to have it like D bags or D different models kind of. Okay. So and and each and every model is also going to have endpoints, but these endpoints may not be this this same endpoints. Okay. So what you do to get these endpoints is, you 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 randomly select 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 one of the data point okay each time with replacement. Okay, when I mean by with replacement, what do I mean is you have x one, x two, and so on, x n. Okay, so I'm talking about D one here. So since since you're going to do here with replacement, the first point for D one can be something like x ten. Okay, the second point can be x nine. The third point can again be x ten. Okay, so In the, in the data set D, there won't be any repetition. But with respect to D one, since you are doing with replacement, okay, so the data, the data, the data points, right? They can be they can be repeated, okay. And so and so on, it's going to have something like let's say it's 900 or something, okay. So here here the the number of data points in D one it still equals n points, okay. And then whatever, uh, but but these n points may not be the may not be all these n points, okay. There can be some points which are like repeated to that. Okay. Same thing goes for D two and so on. D M, which means here when you're doing this with replacement, 
okay whatever data points you have in d1 they may not be same points in d2 and then they, they may not be same points in dm okay so, is this point clear uh, yeah huh? just for clarification so let's say i have uh, let's say 10000 points okay and then huh? i randomly select a subset of those and put it in each of the bags no it's it's not just a subset it's not just a subset okay so it's like uh, you have 10000 data subset, points or no it's not a subset you you, you, you do 10000 you have 10000 data points right yeah correct so for the d1 for the first bag okay for the first bag also it's going to have 10000 data points it's going to have 10000 points okay? okay but then the way you get this 10000 points is you do you do you do 10000 uh, draws kind of okay you you do you do 10000 draws from from this 10000 data points okay the way you do each so draw is the order order is random not just the order not just the order all the points all this 10000 points may not be here some points here may be repeated so for example let's say whatever d1 you have okay so the first point the first point will be randomly selecting Let's say, let's say the first point is extra. Oh, so it's it's okay. like those ten ten thousand whatever let's say coins are or marbles are there in a. Uh-huh. Yeah, numbers, yeah. And you're randomly picking. You're basically picking up. Uh, you're doing ten ten thousand trials. Yeah, right? yeah. You you're doing ten thousand trials. Yeah, you you're, you're doing. And 10, that generates a, that generates a data set for you. Right, right. That that so that generates. Similarly, you a... create d number of or whatever x number. M M number. M, M number. number of bags. And yeah. Each of that bag is a, a sample with replacement, but the Correct. total number. Uh, the total number is same. Is, the is total same. number is same, but then the points, the each and individual points for all this data set, the D1 and so on, DM, they they need not be same. There is like very high chance that they won't be same. And also, okay. this could also mean that there may be points which will never show up in any of the bags. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's like totally possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then uh, actually, you you can look at so this. Will, this will actually help in removing the bias. Then no, no, this will not help in removing the bias. This will help in removing the variance. This will help in removing okay. variance. Variance. So our our model, our model initially itself, it does not have it does not have uh, bias because. Oh, okay. You're saying it's because your your overfitting. overfitting model. Yeah, so yeah. Overfitting okay. model. Okay. So, so you do it only for the overfitting models. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This, this 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 yeah this you do it for the model okay so for using this end end points okay so like just like we said you know we will be randomly selecting with replacement this this end points and using this end points you'll be fitting one model okay so similarly you'll be fitting for d2 as well, and so on dm okay so this is going to be the overfit model each and every model is going to be overfit okay and so on and so on and so on and so on all of them they're going to be overfit models okay Then what you do is you take you take the average of all these models. You you take the average of all these models. It's going to be sine of one by m. Uh, the average of it I equal to one by m h of x one by m. You're going to take the sine of it. Okay. So basically, each and every model is going to be overfit. Okay. Then since 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 you're taking the average of those, since you're taking the average of those, the the variance is going to reduce. Okay. Is this clear? And this model H so, H star or H I star? Yeah. Oh, sorry, H I of X. That model is same as what we did earlier, right? It's the same model you are doing with separate data, different data set. Yeah. So, so it, it so will be a soft margin S V M. No, no, it can be anything. It can, it can be, be any model. It can be. It can any be model. any model. It can be any model. So basically, this bootstrapping oh, which we do huh. here, 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 you won't be fitting. You won't be defining which model you're going to use. This T one model. D1, D2, DM. You can be using any algorithm. Okay, so, and and this, then, this 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 is applicable to regression as well as classification. Could be anything. Yeah, yeah. But mainly, mainly we use it for classification. Okay. Generally, the regression regression models will not have much problem. Just the classification will have no problems. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. But whatever model model you use for is for is for one one model uh, that is like this. for D one if you use if you use if you use that is a one machine learning model the same thing you, you have to use for all the same okay you cannot use use SPM here and the different model here okay but the D the model that is initially built which you have which we have determined is overfit so the mm-hmm. same model will have to be used right I mean same yeah, model yeah 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 the same for yeah, yeah. right right the same model has to be used but that model can be anything. 
Yeah, yeah, the model parameters values will be different, but the modeling technique will have to be the same. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. So then, then the the extension of this bootstrapping model is this, is this random forest. Okay. So in the random Sir. forest model, yeah, Hello? yeah. Sir, why it is one by m present means there is insignificance because m is a positive number. So one by m, that above. You're just taking the average of it. That's it. Since since you're having m models here. No, no. But we are interested in sign now. So yeah, yeah. If there is a no M, so there is no problem. Yeah, even even if you're not to, if, even if you're not going to take this uh, one by M also, it's not going to matter. For this particular model, yes, it's not yes. going to matter. Since since you're just looking at sign. But let's say let's say you're not looking at sign and then like you're looking at some other value, then this matters. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in the random forest model, okay. So this this random random forest model, it, it's an extension of the bootstrapping one. Okay. So in the in the random forest too, you you do this you do this uh, d one to d m the randomly selection data data points. Okay. So the bagging you'll be doing d one to d m. Okay. And along with that, what do you do is you do this feature bagging also. Okay. What do you mean by feature bagging is uh, you have here d features each and each and every that is this each and every input vector they belong to rd right so when they belong to rd which means you have d features there okay okay so you, you have d features previously previously in this model okay so we, we did not put any any restriction on the features we are going to select okay but then if you put the restriction on the on the features also that is like let's say let's say you're going to use some parameter p here okay some parameter p Okay, so and and let's say the your your model is going to be the station tree. Okay, so and and each and and, and at, at each and every point. Okay, at, at each and every stem, stem stem in the decision tree. Okay, so you are going to you should be selecting the best feature, right? That classifies. Okay, and then for you to select the best feature, you initially you initially randomly select few features. Okay, initially this few features also it's going to be like the three placement. Okay, so. For example, you have your D features, and then your P is something like in this particular scenario, it's five. Okay, so you randomly selected selected five features. Okay, and then uh, this is called as a feature bagging. Okay, okay. So from out of out of these five features, you you select you select the best feature, and so on. Even even when you go to the next step. Okay, so so the next station also here here also you you're going to set P equals to five, and then like you're going to set randomly five features. Here also you're going to select randomly five features, and this can be like you have two, you have ten, okay, you have so, eleven, like that. Okay, can we have the repetition over here in feature bagging? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can have the repetition. You can have the repetition. It's going to be like the three plus one. Okay. But but the same set of features will be selected for all the data points within one bag. Yeah, yeah. So the features, the number of features, right? From from which you take sample, that is this. F1 to FD, that's going to be same for all the bags because the uh -huh. data set is same, right? The number of features is going to be same, but the the sample, the sample which you which you're going to get, that is like this one, this one, it it can vary a lot. It can vary a lot from bag to bag. Okay. So the feature feature itself can vary from bag to bag. Is it, is yeah, it? yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The feature itself like can vary from bag to bag. Oh, no, when you mean by feature, uh, this F1 to FD, they are going to be same. Yeah, from the FD, they're going to say, but these values, I mean, like within within that particular no, no. So, bag. So, I mean, if I take an example that I took earlier, so you have those ten thousand data points, right? Mm -hmm. And each of the data point has ten features, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the first bag, okay, mm -hmm. I get ten thousand points, right? But mm -hmm. out of those ten features, I let's say I select five features only. Now, can those features be oh, different yeah. in either of the data points, or they have to be the same five across? They have to be same way across. They have to be same okay. same, same way across the data points. Okay. So, so this you're selecting your, the the where does the randomness of selecting the feature come in? Only in the first. It it comes here. Point. It comes here. It it comes it comes with respect to the data points. So for example, here here you have n data points. Okay. So here 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 you have the n data points. Okay. So for for this n data points, you have you have to select a feature, right? You have you have to select a feature. So you have to you have to make this station now. So Then previously, previously when when you have F1 to FT, okay, so you will be selecting the best feature among all the features, 
but then like when you do the feature bagging you won't be selecting from all the available feature first, first you do the bagging of features okay so when you do the bagging of features you can be getting like very less value there okay so you 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 may not be getting all the features so from from this available feature you'll be selecting best feature okay is it clear and so previously with, this is with replacement the features are also yeah with yeah 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 with replacement so if the original data has 10 features uh, for, then will will the bags also have 10 features data points in the bag i mean 10 the number data, of the data points is, is going is going to have 10 features because each and every data point they belongs to rd they belong to rd okay but then the the feature the feature this 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 bagging feature they can be different they 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 they, they, they will not be all all the time Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Go from your doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, this uh, feature bagging process will make uh, training faster. No, it's not going to. It's not going to make the make the training faster. It's the 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 whole idea is that uh, each and each and every bag, each and every bag. So, for example, the first bag D one, it's going to be different from the second bag D two. Okay. So there there won't be any any correlation between D one and D two. Yes, sir. Okay, so so that's the idea. That's the idea because since 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 you are doing the sampling of the of the features also, okay, the the first uh -huh. bag the first bag can be like entire entire different respect to second bag. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's the that's a random forest model. Okay. Generally, the preferred the preferred uh, feature I mean the feature bagging is p value which I told. Okay. So so that p value cannot be very less and and it cannot be equal to d also. The the preferred p value is equal to square root of p. Okay. So from this, from this, from this uh, bootstrapping model, the only thing, the only thing we'll be asking is this conceptual questions. Okay. When I mean the conceptual questions, you should just be understanding for for what kind of models. I mean, if it, if it is a overfit, okay. In, in, initially, each and every model is going to overfit. What does the bootstrapping do? Okay. So will it, will it reduce the variance or or, or will it reduce the bias and all, all that only those conceptual questions will be asking the bootstrapping model and then and then the or, or the random forest model okay it tries to reduce the variance okay it will, it will not reduce the bias all right okay so just that part alone alone if you're able to follow then it's going to be sufficient for enter now now we'll come to the boosting model okay so previously in the in the bootstrapping model what we had done is uh, Whatever point you are going to select, there there is no weightage for selection of points. So all all the points have equal chance, equal equal chance to get selected. Okay, but but in this Adaboost algorithm, okay, the way way it's going to happen is it's it's this the there is going to be weightage weightage with respect to each and every data points also as we move along. Okay, so here here also here also you can be having this T models. Okay, so you be you'll be having T different models. Okay. Just like just like you had there the M packs. Okay, so here also you're having that. But then for each and every model, okay, for the first model, it's going to be the endpoints which you're going to select. The endpoints which you're going to select for the first model, the probability is going to be same. Okay, just like before, the probability for selecting each and every point that's going to be same. Okay. And then you see using that, using that, you'll be building a model. Okay. Then for second, for subsequent models. Okay, for subsequent models, the what's going to happen is uh, this DT. Okay, this DT DT is the DT of i is a, is a probability for selecting the ith point in the in the tth model. Okay, DT of i is a probability for selecting ith point. Okay, it's 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 a, it's a probability for selecting ith point in uh, ith point in the tth model. If it is a first model. It doesn't matter what the point is, there is like equal chance for it to get selected, so it's going to be one by one. Okay. But for subsequent models, the way the way you're going to defend this probability is the way the way you're going to defend this is going to be if that particular point is correctly classified, if that point is correctly classified, then the, then you're going to reduce the weightage. Okay. If that point is not correctly classified, then then you're going to increase the weightage so, so that there's more chance for that point to get selected. Okay, this is point clear. So, for example, I have first model D naught. Okay, so the first model D naught, 
and then this particular model it has a let's say 10000 data points and then in this 10000 data points 7000 points are classified correctly and then 3000 are not classified correctly these are classified correctly and these are not classified correctly so in the next round that is d1 round the probability to select the 7000 point it's going to be lesser and then the probability to select this 3000 point it's going to be higher okay so so the main main goal here is that since since, since you are reducing this probability for selection of the 7000 points you will not be there's like less chance for you to get this get these points there's more chance for you to get the model where the points are like uh i mean among these 10000 points you're going to get in d1 there's more chance for you to get more of this 3000 points okay so the wrongly classified points are going to be there in d1 more wrongly classified points are going to be there in d1 since you have the more wrongly classified points now this d1 is going to classify this 3000 points correctly i mean some of those 3000 points correctly okay are you able to follow this point yes sir okay so now in that particular manner so fr fr from this no, from this uh, model also sorry, uh, uh, yeah i was on mute i didn't realize it so uh, uh, initially you are saying the probability of selecting a point is equal across all yeah. the points yeah yeah so, uh, but after the first round so you are so what we do is we take the uh, points we build a model we classify them mm -hmm. then we find out that 7000 of them were correctly classified 3000 were wrongly classified yeah, yeah. then uh, before we apply the model again or not, build, not the, because, build the model again yeah before we select the points itself for us to select the points itself we are going to use this no but how that's do good. i how do i increase the probability for those 3000 yeah that's what we are, we are doing this you, you see here you are going to multiply if this point is not classified correctly you are going to multiply that by e for alpha t okay so which means that you are, you, are, you are increasing that probability by e for alpha t and then if that point is already correctly classified then you are going to decrease the probability by e power minus alpha t and uh, okay? what is sorry what is this alpha uh, this 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 alpha alpha is going to be this hyperparameter thing. Okay. okay, it's a hyperparameter. Yeah, yeah. So so the the way you choose this alpha is going to be something like okay, you have your three thousand data points, right? You have three thousand data points. For example, initially, sir, okay. can you write the formula for alpha? Like I think below sir has written. Yeah, yeah. You have this alpha. This is going sir. to be the alpha formula. But huh. sir, but many places. Uh, I saw that there is uh, in many book it, um, it is root is not being used. Okay, so what we will do is for us for, for our particular scenario we will be following this one. So we will be using the root. Okay. Like so, we are uh, sir, one, one by we, two in without root part. Now one one minus error. Is it same both the things? Okay. Okay, so what what we'll be doing is for our particular course, we'll be following we'll be following what what professor has mentioned, and uh, moreover, we'll not be getting any questions from this, so we need not have to worry about that one. Okay, sir. Okay. Actually, Google also and not found this formula anywhere, so I, I just asked. It's it's totally fine. Okay. So what we're going to do is do we uh, do, uh, do we need to remember this formula or? No, no, you need not have to. You won't be getting any problems from this. You won't be getting any. Any, any, no, the problem solving ones you not be getting. Okay. So any mathematical ones you not be getting. It's just going to be conceptual problems from week 11. So it's going to be fine. All right. What are you so, and, and sir, uh, like one, 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 you know, question. So, so instead of using E, like E raised to alpha T, uh, you know, can we use, you know, different, uh, you know, multiplier? We can we can obviously obviously use, use a different multiplier, but right? then okay. if you're if you're going to use it, but then won't be that then it won't be add about algorithm. Okay, so this this in the add oh, algorithm okay. we are going to use this one. Okay, okay. That is that is a fixed in that uh, yeah, yeah. ADA that, that okay. algorithm oh. is different. So okay. obviously, obviously you can use you can use a different parameter. You can multiply it by a different parameter. The idea is just that uh which are points that are not classified correctly, for them you'll be increasing the probabilities of selection. For those points which are which are already classified correctly, you decrease in the probability of selection. That's it. Okay. And, and then the same way, same way you'll be you'll be doing forward in the in the next rounds. Okay. Now and sir, what we are doing yeah. in the third uh, third step. 
this third step this one mm-hmm. okay so here what we are trying to do is the sum of the probabilities of selection for each and every point should be equal to one right <coughs> the sum of the probability should be equal to one but then if you are since you are multiplying it by e power alpha t and then like uh, and then like you know for some points you are like multiplying it by e power minus alpha t so we are direct sum won't be equal to one yeah you just normalizing it yeah, thank you sir so you just sir yeah uh, the alpha t used for updation can it uh, and the alpha t uh, which uh, represents the performance of the model can they be used interchangeably can you should put the the uh, alpha t used for uh, updation in dt plus 1 Yeah, yeah, they can be, they can be used interchangeably. Okay. Okay. Uh, because so, there was a question in discussed in TA session, and uh, like we we solved that question using uh, using them interchangeably, but yeah, uh, conceptually they are not the same thing, right? Conceptually, they are not the same thing, but then they the 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 values the values at the end of the day they they are like very much closer. So so we can take it like interchangeably. Okay, so that's not okay. a problem. Okay. So that's fine. Okay. So then uh, this is the this is the probability for you to for you to get the get the data points. Okay, and once you get the data points, you'll be building the model like before. Okay. Then uh, then what do you do is previously previously in your in your in your bagging model okay the random forest model there is like there's like equal probability for each and every model there what you done is you just done 1 by m okay sum of i equals to 1 to m h i of x okay so so this h i of x that's that's what we have done so you take the sign of this you get you get taken sign of this so here what does that mean is each and every model for 1 to m it has a it has a equal weightage okay but But in in this in this set of course algorithm, each and every model it cannot be having the same weightage. Okay, so the weightage is going to be this alpha t alpha t for this particular model H t, and this alpha t is going to be equal to ln of uh, square root of one by one minus error of h of t h t. So so this model error, this H t model whatever error it has, okay, so it's going to depend upon the error. The error is the percentage of the 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 This class of points, okay. So it's going to be one minus error of H T divided by the error of H T. Okay. So this value, if the error is less, if the error is less, then the alpha T is going to be more, okay. And then if the error is high, then the alpha T is going to be less. And this makes sense because if the if the, if a particular model if the particular model is classifying correctly, then we want to give more weightage to that. If the, if the particular model has less error. Then we want to give more weightage, and then if the particular model has more error, then we want to re- reduce the weightage. Okay. Is so that clear? Can, can you repeat, sir? So here, the e value, if the if the error value. Okay, so if the error value is less, then if you if you just if you just look at it here. Okay, so if the error value is less, then the alpha value will be more. Okay, and then if the error value is high, then the alpha t value be, is going to be less. And then, since this alpha t is the weightage, it it ultimately implies that uh, if a model if a model has a, has less error, then it's going to have more weightage, okay? And and if it has more weightage, what does that mean? The in the ultimate model, that particular model which has which has less error, it's going to it's going to be like it's going to have more weightage. It's going to play one of one of the important role, you can say. Okay? And then, if that model has if the particular H I model It, it has more error then the alpha t the weightage is going to be less okay which means in this particular in this particular model that particular h i model may not be playing more uh, higher role okay so for example let's say let's say you have 10 models okay so not 10 models let's say you have like three models h1 h2 h3 okay the error for this is 0.1 and then the error for this is let's say 0.9 this is error okay Error, error is point nine, and then error for this let's say point four. Okay, so then the weightages can be something like this. H T is going to be something like let's say this. This is just some dummy values. It can be something like point nine H one, point nine nine H one, plus point one H two plus 
something like 0.6 h3 so here since this since this h2 model has has high error okay so the weightage for that particular model is going to be less which means in this ht model it's this this model is not going to play play key role it won't play key role but these two models will play key role okay specifically because they have less error okay is this clear yes sir yes sir so yeah that's uh, all sir, this have... point one means less less error right yeah yeah the point one means less error no, but the error is so then less point nine in yeah. HC, no, point, point, error point is nine is zero. high error. So so then H2 H2 has to have uh, less weightage, right? Yeah, yeah. We had here point one, right? Point one yeah, less yeah, weightage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one question is when we do the weight assignment and then rebuild the model. Is it possible that a previously correctly classified point, a data point, is now misclassified? So, okay. because there's an iterative process, right? So, will yeah, it convert? Yeah, yeah. Will it yeah, convert? Yeah, it's going to convert. So, and then the in, the, in this Adobe uh, algorithm, what can show is if you, if you, if a number of models you're going to build, you're, you're going to build. If it is greater than or equal to lan of lan, lan two n by two gamma square. Okay, so so this gamma is going to be the Depending upon the model, like how how good your model is, okay, how how good your initial initial weak weak learner is, okay. So, which, which I mean, ultimately, what this means is, okay. So after after some iterations, after some models, okay. So the error is going to be equal to zero, okay. So after let's say like if, if this value is let's say like fifteen, okay. So after after fifteen models, okay. So 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 this HT of X, the training error is going to be zero. The training error is zero. That means that all the points are classified correctly. Yes. Okay. So it's it's you 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 are going to get it. Okay. Okay. So sir, this thing I didn't got. What what do you mean by how weak weak learner is? Okay. So we are going to we are going to have this HT right. This is this HT HT this HA which are one okay. H one H two H two and so on this HT. That's yeah. going to be the weak learner right. Yes. That is the weak learner. How, how good this particular model is? How good is each individual model is? That's what we are trying. Okay. That's what we are trying to talk. About. Okay. okay. If that individual model is like very good, then this gamma is going to be high. Then within 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 less iterations itself, the training error is going to be zero. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's all we have with respect to the Adobe algorithm too. Okay. So again, again here also here also you won't be getting. You won't be getting any any conceptual problems. Okay, so it's just going to be the sorry. You're going to you're going to just get just get the conceptual questions. You won't be getting any problem solving. Or, okay, uh, sir, can you please explain the graph the graph below? Here, this one. Uh, this is yep, the training yep. error. This is the training error. As I told, after after some after some three iterations, okay, the training error is going to be entirely zero. But this is the test error. Okay, this is the test error. As you increase the number of number of iterations, the test error is going to is going to reduce. Okay, it's never going to be zero, but even after this t, even after this t star, this t star is a point where training error is going to zero. Training error is zero. Okay. okay. After after this t star also, if you increase t, the still still the test error is going to reduce. Okay. Clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what that that graph means. So. Uh, and and one more thing, this it is written as cannot run in parallel. Whether the, these model are run sequentially, in okay. Post yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Adaboost. So if you look at this Adaboost algorithm, okay. So the H two. Okay. So let's say like yeah, H H not. Okay. So based on H H not, based on H not only can run H H one, because. The correct classification or misclassification of H H one based on that only will be H one. From H one only will be H two. So from H two only will be H three. So you cannot be running them parallelly. Okay. But for but for the bagging algorithm, you're H, running H1, them parallelly. Okay. Yeah, you can you can yeah. run them parallelly because and H two H one they are not related. And then at the last you are taking the average. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but so, in the in this case there is no average. In this uh, Adabus there is no average, right? No, no. This is a fi final final model because that is where it's coming. Ah, you are doing converging. You you are doing the you are doing the weighted one. You are doing the weighted weighted version of it. 
conceptually it's like perceptron algorithm itself it's just the techniques are different but the iterative nature is similar so there there also you're taking something which has not been correctly classified yeah. and then you are computing a new w transpose are you computing the w star yeah if you look at it from the from the perspective yeah but the perceptron on this only 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 in that perspective it's, it's related in the meaning all perspective it's related yeah, yeah so purely from a computing perspective and all it is yeah yeah the flow of the algorithm is fundamentally the same everywhere yeah yeah okay. so that's all we have with respect to this week 11 okay so any questions here and again I'm, again i'm telling you uh, yeah. from the center enter we can we just to get in the conceptual questions okay can you can, sir, can you take uh, one mock question one question from the mock uh, it was uh, it is regarding the calculation of value c in, i'm uh, okay so which question is it you won't be getting any any of the problem solving one so i don't think there's point in solving it uh, okay okay, okay. But so I, you, but you won't be getting huh? conceptually i wanted to know what uh, okay sir okay if it is not okay so you won't be getting any of these problems no but but the, the, the that is not uh, Related to this boosting and bagging, that is from the um, SVM problem. So even even in SVM two, you not be getting any any problems or so okay. it's going to be like the conceptual ones only. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Okay. So from now onwards, uh, Michelle will be taking. Okay. So Michelle are there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, any end term previous year question paper has been solved? Any session that happened? Uh, I guess previous term paper has been solved by the TAs, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, twenty six. Yeah, so you can see the recording, I guess. It's already we have told them to record. So where, yeah, yeah, yeah. where is that recording store? Uh, in calendar. I mean, uh, they are in the calendar. Twenty sixth. No, the recording. Uh, recording is not in the calendar. The calendar has the only it the is. meeting link. When it when is. I oh, click click on the oh, it is there now. Okay, let me let me check. There for for those two lectures there. Yeah, a YouTube link on the twenty sixth, right? Okay. Okay. So yes, a drive link. Yeah. So so the for the twelfth week. Yeah, so Ram has already told about the SVM part. We'll be getting uh, mostly the theoretical portions, and but from this week, uh, the last week, we'll be getting the question that you need to calculate, and that may take a bit time. So I'll, I'll try to solve some problem, four or five problem. I came with some problem. I'll not be discussing any concept today because yesterday it was like it went for three and a half hours and all. So we'll just be discussing the problem that may help you to solve some problem in the exam. Okay. 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 And okay, the twelfth okay. week doesn't have much of the concepts. Also, only those three, four losses yeah. that you already know. And yeah, so the formula you should be knowing for each of the losses, and it's not necessary how did it came. So like in the optimization problem itself, the the losses function generally comes there. But okay, so it's like four. Uh, loss function that you should be knowing. So the first two is the basic one, the zero one, then the square loss, hinge loss, and then the cross entropy that you should be knowing. Okay, uh, how to calculate at least. So I'll, I'll be solving some problem one two, and then that will help you. And there will be a question from neural network. So but those like that will be very basic. Maybe number of like you just have to count the hidden layer or, or some simple problem, or maybe you need to just calculate the output. From any of the neuron, like in any of the hidden layer, they can give you, like you have to calculate the output from the second hidden layer, like first neuron of the second hidden layer, and they'll be giving you each and every activation functions for each of the neuron or each of the hidden layer. Okay, so they'll be giving you all the input data, and then you. So one more thing, so whenever you are solving those type of problems, just see. You can be asked to calculate the output of any of the particular neural. Okay, it's not necessary that they'll be asking always to calculate the 
whole output value okay they can ask you to calculate the uh, values outside like that that generally comes from the second neuron of some hidden layer first or something like that okay so just check it with chap what has been asked to calculate okay so blindly you should not be calculating anything uh, sir are you uh, you know taking those those kind of questions uh, today yeah yeah i'll be solving some questions so you just you if you have a pen and paper just try to solve that and then after i'll, I'll solve okay so we'll try to wrap up in a maybe 45 minutes or an hour so yesterday i was having some important work and then i missed it i just came with some problem that you should be solving okay uh and yeah so just this is your okay you are able to see my screen right yes yes sir. yes okay so you have been given a true label for the data so you have been given so there were some data and according to that data we have calculated with maybe with some classifier we got the predicted value so you don't have to worry about the classifier which classifier we have used and all just that we have used some classifier we got the predicted value as this and the earlier the true label that was available from the data set was been given okay on this basis and there is some information given also so can somebody explain me what is this information if the predicted label is value that sorry the predicted value it should be value is greater than 0.75 the classifier will classify it as a 1 and 0 otherwise so you are able to understand this right yeah. yes sir okay so will it be same to the if i'll change this predicted value as 0.5 will the true, true label and the predicted label will be same or different If I'm changing the predict for the classifier, let's for example, it was a some logistic regression that, and then the value predicted value I was changing. Okay, so that may be a hyperparameter that I was changing, and I have changed it to point five. So if it is greater than point five, I'll be taking the predicted label as one, otherwise zero. But for greater than point seven five, so will the true label and uh, will the predicted level for both the classifier will be same or different? No, it will be different. It will be different. It should be different. Yeah. So now you can see this, right? I'll just. So this is visible, right? These are the three questions that you have to calculate. So the first one is the zero one loss. This is pretty simple. The second one is the cross entropy loss, and the third one is the square. Okay. So cross entropy formula you are already aware, right? So cross entropy can be used for. <coughs> so this type of data set, right? What is the formula for the? How do you calculate that cross entropy loss? Log loss. Log of? Yeah. Log loss. Log yeah, of. Basically, log summation log. of y into log of that like log of that probability value, right? If you have some predicted value in the form of probability. How do you write? You write like this. Summation. Summation of. This is how you one. write, okay? Summation of minus one. Correct. Yeah, you. Somebody was asking something. Most of them. It's minus one. Ah, ah. Okay. Yeah. And sir, uh, what base should we use for this calculation? Ah, this is the label that was present already, and the value has been given right for each of the point. Okay, first calculate the zero one loss. I will tell you how to calculate the second one. So according to this classifier. 
What should be the value for the first data point? Zero. 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 Should be zero. The second for the second? One. One. For the third? Zero. 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 One, one. One. one one so what is the number of misclassified point two. two so that is zero one loss right yeah so that is basically zero one loss so you can see that this was this is classified correctly this is also this this is not correctly classified and this is classified correctly this is not so you have two right So for this it should be two, right? <clears throat> yeah, for the cross entropy, I told you the formula. What was the formula that you use for the cross entropy? Minus y sum of y hat into uh, log y predicted to the base two. Okay, for say, <clears throat> how will you write this? Do you have to write for the any label which have like the where the label is zero? Do you have to write that because every time no. it will be so you should yeah, have to be to be zero. Yeah, is so for and yeah and one more thing the base should be what two right? So if the base is not been given, just to take two okay. So how will you calculate this? So for three cases, because if you are writing, if whenever the true label is zero, you can just it will be what zero multiplied with some log value. Okay, it will be zero. Mm, zero. But for the cases where the true label was one, you have to multiply right one minus one into log of what? A log of zero. One. Point so we will calculate it based on true label or predicted label uh, based on true label right okay sir can you can you scroll up a little bit so here here it's a uh, you know pi means the predicted label right not not the predicted value which one so the log log pi what is what is this pi the pi is the predicted, predicted value predicted that label? you are getting from the classifier predicted value that you are getting predicted value okay so if that was predicted okay. label then like zero doesn't come in the domain of log function right yep 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 got it <clears throat> excuse me sir yeah Oh, uh, will will the formula be y i log to the base two y predicted? No, this is p the predicted value, the probability, whatever the value that you are getting. No, okay, okay. I I thought from the lecture it should. Okay, uh, I'll just check. Okay. Okay. What is the value you are getting? One multiply log zero point seven five plus cross one. entropy. Cross entropy we require to measure uh, depending upon true value, right? What did you say? True value. Yeah, depend upon the two. Uh -huh. two. But, yeah, yeah, correct. So I don't know. But, why. I feel that it should be uh, y two label log base two to the predicted label. I mean, I did that in practice assignment twelve. 
ओके व्हिच क्वेश्चन द प्रैक्टिस असाइनमेंट फिफ्थ फिफ्थ वन फिफ्थ ओके आई विल चेक इट आउट ओके ओके द रिजल्ट 1.66 See, so what's the form? Okay, so I got your point. Maybe you understood it. In see, so I so think it should be should be done based on predicted level, not on. Uh, so like whatever the label you have, basically you can write it Y I or whatever. So the that should be the label that the predicted label that should not be Y I the value exactly because if that is Y I then zero can't be in the domain of log, right? so that should not be yi it can be something else okay like yi cap or something the value corresponding to that yi okay not the, exactly the yi uh, i think it's a y hat and and then you know uh, based so on your model i had is basically the number that you are getting corresponding to that particular data point yeah yeah, yeah so it can be so the question itself so it, there it was what is that okay you are not able to see my screen huh? um yes sir that that is like kind of regression problem ha huh, so this is what okay yeah so you have it's not exactly y it's like the value corresponding to that particular y okay no uh, so so, so yes screen is not visible yeah screen is not visible so then we take the probability sir yeah so whatever the values here it is given in the form of probability right so you should be taking that okay okay got it thank you sir Mm. Uh, just to be clear on the formula, so it is y hat i, right? Into okay, log so you can write it like this: c y i cap minus of log to y i cap, and y so y i cap or hat, whatever you want to say, is the the value that you are getting corresponding to that y i. Okay, the value is here in the form of probability value, right? Some zero to one. Okay, okay so that so is the right. predicted value. Okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. my bad. And the and the y y i is the original label. Yeah, y is the true label. Yeah, true label. Yeah. So okay. Is this did you calculate it? So in, yeah, so you should be using this log to base two many a times many of the places because you are getting. From the decision tree also, if you are getting any question, should be solving with the base two. Okay, you should be having correct. Like there are uh, three, four questions. Those are mathematical, like calculation based from this decision tree, and where you should be using this log of base two. Okay, so you should not be mis doing any mistake. The third loss, uh, the third square loss, is like pretty simple, right? So we are getting two okay. different answers in the chat. So which one is correct? Okay. So what is the value of this log to zero point seven five? It should be some positive value. I don't know what is that. And then you can calculate for this six five and seven five. So log to zero point six five, then minus log to zero point eight five. What is the value you are getting for this? Cal calculate maybe let me check whether I, the calculator that I have so that will be log zero point two three four four zero point two three okay for this it will be some greater than so total is coming around to one point two seven. Is this correct? One point two seven. So this is what I was saying. So you can do some practice with while calculating the value because everyone is getting different value, and the answer, the range for that answer won't be that big. That be getting. Okay. So let me check what is the value I'm getting.
I think so. It's not zero. This is zero point four one three. Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah. And then you have uh, this. The other part will be getting something. Zero point six two one. Zero point six two one. Third one is six two. Correct. Yeah. Zero point six two. You'll be getting. Third one is zero point two three four four seven. Yeah. This will be getting zero point two three. Correct. And then you can add it. So this is point eight five, and then point four one. Okay, one twenty six. So this is correct. Okay, so whoever was doing, and if you are having a struggling, if you are struggling in calculating, if you don't have log two directly in the calculator, what you can do is you can just do it like so. Base ten will pakka be there, so you can just divide it everything by log two, and log two basically is zero point three, so you can do it like that also. So the third part they'll be able to solve, right? So the third part is pretty simple. You just have to whatever the value which is given here. So like zero point two five minus zero guys square, and then just add it for all the values. We'll be getting this square loss, right? Is there any problem in this? Sir, uh, here also we require to use same true value. Correct true value only. And uh, only in zero one last we used to use that first. Uh, see why are we using the value? Like see whenever you have been given some data set, so this was the true level that you are getting. Okay, so basically what happens if you have some data set x i and y i, okay, and then you have been given some model. Okay, y i is following some model like m x plus c. That you calculate, but here x i for The x i is not been given here. Well, you have been given the model the value itself, right? This is the model the value itself. Basically, th this is what you calculate, right? If you have to calculate a square loss, what do you calculate basically? You calculate this y i, correct? This y i cap or whatever you want to say, y i cap from the model, and then you subtract it from the exact exact label, right? You put the value of all the data set and get the uh, the, the get the value that you should be getting, right? From your model. And then calculate the error. How much deviation is there from the from the model that from the value that you are getting from your model and earlier from the data set. This is what you calculate, correct? But here you are true predicted. So whatever the uh, model that is using, this is the value that they are giving you. So the value has been given and the label has also been given. Okay, so the, for the regression, mostly that, that's why we don't use the square loss here, right? But if you have been asked to calculate, you should be calculating. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, first one answer is two. Second one answer is one point two seven. And third one. Third one you can calculate. This is simple, right? Point two five k square plus point two five k square, and then point five k square. So you can do it, right? Okay. Hmm. The second question. Uh, so uh, before, uh, like before, before we go to the second question. So, uh, uh, like I have one, one, one question from the practice assignment. If, if you can open the uh, practice assignment of week twelve, uh, I can. Because see, I, I can open that, but you have the deadline for that is okay. Practice assignment, ask. Practice, practice assignment, not uh, yeah. Uh, so i just ping the link on the chat if if you can this is practice okay. week 12 yeah so in the uh, like in the first first question itself okay so here here the w0 is Is one and W one is one. Okay, so so, so this W is a vector, right? Yeah. So your classifier is something W not plus W one transpose X. So this is the bias, and then this is your classifier, the model that you have. Oh, okay, okay. So oh, 
so i thought it is it is it is a w is given in a in a vector form it's it's not like, like in that. the vector form only but it's like but the vector can be in the two dimensional right okay here yeah, but but like, but ah, so this is simple so, no 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 yeah, yeah now yeah now i got it i mean i i thought this so you know the w0 is, is, is a bias which which i missed it okay okay so yeah so solve the second question okay we'll solve one problem on the hinge laws also because that also is important So basically how do you calculate hinge laws what is the formula for that for hinge laws at least you should Matt be doing this for this Matt formula Matt at least so that you can calculate Matt the exam it is max of 0 uh, comma 1 minus w or uh, transpose x i y i okay so i am giving you one problem uh, please solve try to solve that you have been given a data set okay here i am giving you a data set x1 x2 and then you have y so the label is also been given and you have been given the the w vector also and that is in the form of two dimensional and x1 x2 you can write it like i'm just giving you a simple example so that you can solve and then and if you are getting any similar type of problem you should be solving there Formula also it. Okay, so you have and then you have to calculate now. Calculate hinge laws. So hinge laws basically formula I'm writing, but how I am writing, but it's like you should be knowing. So max of zero comma. What is that? One minus W transpose. W transpose X I. W transpose X I. Y I. Y I. Correct. Yeah, calculate the value for each of the data. Okay, for first point, calculate it. And what should be the label according to that hinge, uh, this SVM? So this is basically a simple, so this is basically a simple linear model, linear SVM. Sir, loss is zero and predicted labels all will be one. All are one. Yes, sir. I don't think so. All are one, I guess. But the first one, I guess, you are correct. Can the you? One, you are correct. Uh, but can you, can you show one, it, you sir? Huh? Uh, can you solve one? Uh, okay. So for one, okay. Let me check. So uh, you tell me. Max of you have to calculate for first data point. For the first data point, x i equals to one. How will you calculate max of zero comma one minus what is this W transpose you already have, right? What is Xi? So 0, 1. 2, 2, 1. If you are multiplying with 2, 1, what are the value you are getting? 1. 1. Okay. Multiply, then multiply with one. Yi is 1. So max of 0, 0 is what? 0. 0. So your label should be what? This loss is what? Loss is zero. This is zero, right? This is zero, yes. correct? So I've, I've just asked you to calculate the loss. I didn't ask you anything else. Okay, the, for the first data point, I calculated. Just calculate for the second and third. See, if, if at least you should be solving, like, the mathematical questions are there. If you know the formula, you should be calculating them. And there is no, at least from this speak, there won't be any conceptual problem. So if you had the conceptual problem, then it becomes a difficult for but if you have that if you are not able to solve this mathematical problem also then it will be very difficult like 50 percent of the paper more than 50 percent is like calculation based and like 40 to 45 percent is the, the the conceptual and that conceptual itself is msq so that can be that can hurt you but you should be solving all those problems which are like at least the mathematical ways uh, so this mathematical problems will be coming from which uh, which portion, uh, which which section of the course? The last meeting, I told you the tenth week. Some questions are there. 
will speak some questions at their calculation day and then i'll be solving for the pre like some previous weeks also but we is already 10 so please try to solve it asap so that we can just cover it some more weeks okay first the loss for the second data point so zero zero right and this for the third one minus minus so if you are having any problem so did you find any problem in calculating the loss Sir, third, for third point will be zero. Sir, how third one is minus one? Okay, just calculate for the third one. What is this max of zero comma? What did we get for that W transpose X I? W transpose X I is two. One. We got two for third one. And one minus two with the minus one, so zero. Oh, sorry, the loss will be zero. It can't be minus one. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. It can't be because we have to take max. Okay. So the value will be minus one, but okay, the max of zero and minus one will be zero. Oh. Okay, I am giving you one more thing. So for all the point it came zero now, take zero to minus one. Calculate for this one. So it will be just I am just want to say that like the loss can be other values also. For this, it should be getting some different value, not zero for sure. Three. Yeah. So you will be getting three here. Yeah. Okay, so I guess if you are getting for and from the hinge loss or entropy, uh, the cross entropy or square loss, the zero one loss, you'll be able to solve now. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next part. Is it clear to everyone the loss thing? So then value like for the hinge loss, we'll be writing zero 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 ten three. Sorry. What what what? The hinge loss like it is calculated for each data point, like right? so we will be answering. I will be asked for each only data points for each data points. No. It will be pretty simple, don't worry. Okay, so let's move to the next part, and this is like simple. You have been given a neural network. You are able to see this, right? So how many inputs are there? Four inputs. How many hidden uh, layers are there? Hidden layers are there for this neural network? Three. Three, and then you have output. Okay, so the three. Okay, so now tell me, so the number of hidden layer you can directly say, right? It is three. Correct. Uh, sir. All the columns, uh, columns are the layers, or the rows are the layers. Sir. What is no? See, hidden layer means this one. This is the first hidden layer, and this is the second hidden layer, and this is the third one. It's not our rows and column. Okay, you can think of that as a row, but okay, it's like, but this first one is the input that you are applying. Okay. And each of the inputs should be applied to each of the hidden each of the neurons. So this is the one neuron of the first hidden layer, and you have basically how many neuron in the first hidden layer? Three, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Basically, just the same three number you have for the second layer also, and two for the third layer. Okay. Now, for the first layer hidden layer you have three, right? And for the hidden layer also you have three. Can you tell me the path if you want to go from? Uh, the third neuron, okay. The third neuron of H3. Okay. Sorry, this is H2, not H3. Sir, hidden okay. layer. Sir. If you have to go from here to output, how many paths you can have? What What did you say? Second question. What is the second question? Okay, the second question is the number of neuron in the first hidden layer. So this is the first hidden layer. Mm -hmm. How many neurons you have? How many circle? Basically, you have three, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So each of the circle will be having some weight, okay, and each of the circle will be having some activation. Function also that we'll see with one more example, but at least you should be knowing this much, okay? So that we'll be able to solve some problem. Is this clear? So, what is the number of path that you should be going like from third neuron? So, which are the third neuron of H two? The second layer. This is the third, right? Yes. And how many path you have if you want to go it from here to the output? Two, two, two four. One, four. Four. Okay. four, four, four or two, right? This is one path, and this is the second path. Correct? Yes, sir. Let's move to the third version. Yeah, and this is important one. Uh, which of the following statements are correct? Okay. So, the, what is the cross entropy? If you have to calculate the cross entropy of x one x two, is it same as cross entropy of x two x one? No, sir. No, no. No, right? It's not commutative. And hinge loss is this a formula for hinge loss? So this is correct. Sorry, yes, this is incorrect. Yes, yes, this it is correct. Is. Uh, this is incorrect, right? I already told you the cross entropy. Now this is important for a multi-class class classifier classification. 
can you use a cross entropy loss you can use it right in the, you are using this in the neural network so neural network can have a multi class classification also hinge loss is basically for the primary class so question number 4 is not clear for multi class classification cross entropy loss will be a appropriate fu what is that a function this is function okay or loss whatever you want to call it eh? so is that correct yeah so that this, this one is correct and this was incorrect because hinge you will be using for svm that is basically uh, you can use it but mostly it's not appropriate to use uh, hinge loss may, mostly we are using for the hinge, uh, binary classification okay and uh, here we have read about the cross entropy that we are using the neural network also so neural network so that is used for the multi class classification so this type of statement is like simple but that can be asked okay so the so this what i have told you like four formula that four five whatever the loss function is there should be knowing okay nicely at least the graph and the and the uh, the basic mathematical equation okay now this is a bit difficult problem and that you should be knowing okay so just read it all the statement if you are able to see this screen just read all the statement so you have a simple neural network with one hidden layer so there is only one hidden layer with two neurons using sigmoid activation that means each of the neuron has a activation function sigmoid okay and input has three neurons so input has three values maybe you can say that it has like three features okay and then output will be having one neuron and most of the output will be using linear activation okay in the neural network like linear only because what are the value that you are getting from the the last hidden layer that should reflect the outer part so that's why we just basically use the linear activation function in the output and these are the all values that has been given and then you have been asked to calculate something so calculate the output of n2 that means uh, the neuron second of the hidden layer can you do it or should you do you need any yeah, can, you, can you just scroll up a little bit just okay input with the three neurons so basically should i draw the neural network no sir not no sir it's simple right? so just try to cal calculate it. so can you scroll down okay so is it clear now so now all the information about the hidden layer has been given so this is the yeah. first neuron of the hidden layer this is the second layer second neuron this is the first one this is the second one so all the weight has been given and bias is also been given so okay don't miss to like you see whether the bias has been given or not if the bias is not been given you can just ignore it but if the bias is given every time you have to add that okay and add it and then only you can put inside the activation function how many neurons are there in hidden layer 3 or 2 what no see you have a hidden layer so you have basically three in input right and <clears throat> this is your hidden layer so hidden layer so is having many? how many boxes three. two boxes right two boxes but the weight according to weight will be three right because for each of the value will be having some weight right and then you have bias also and then the sigmoid function also So, what is the for, like equation for the sigmoid function? What is the value one upon one by e to the power one minus z? One plus e to the power minus z. Ah, huh. <clears throat> this is how the is you are calculate the sigmoid function. So, whatever the value you'll be getting here, add the bias value and then put it inside the sigmoid function. That will be your output of this hidden layer, this neural n one, and the n two you have here, and here you have output. Okay. output also has some so output has only one neuron and then that also have a weight so whatever the value you are getting from here so n1 will get multiplied with 0.2 and then n2 will get multiplied with 0.4 and then you will be adding the bias here and put inside the linear function and this will be your output but here this will be the, your overall output but you can be asked to calculate any of the places here you have been asked to calculate 
for output of n2 okay so you have been asked to calculate here what should be the output here uh, sir what is what is the linear function we should use is it linear is it given or be using when yeah so everything will be given so linear function is here like while coming out it's, that it's... Uh, so oh, the whole neural network now, at the output you have the activation function of linear function here not in any of the neural yeah, but... yeah. yeah 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 yeah, but it will be just a WTX. Uh, uh, okay, the linear function that will be same y equals to x. That will replace identity function, whatever you want to call it. So whatever the value oh. you'll be getting, it will just reflect the same thing. Oh, Sir, on n two, we have we just we just need to, uh, you know, sum it, sum it up everything, and, and that's the value. Fine. Fine. Yeah, but here it uh, you have been all different thing, right? Yeah, they have yeah, asked yeah. to calculate for here the output of the yeah. Yeah, yeah this yeah, problem yeah. is a different, but yeah, if you have to if you have been asked to calculate, so you can calculate the other problem also. So this is the first one. And the second one is to calculate output value from so whatever the output from the output neuron or the out from the output neuron that you're having. So exactly the output. Value that you have to calculate. Sir, what will be the data? Sir, uh, sir could this you data, the, All the data has been given, right? Okay, okay, sorry. The input has also been given here. So, this is the input that you are applying. I thought I didn't give the input. Sir, so we have to calculate it two times for N1, first time, and for N1, and for second time for N2. No, no, no. See, this is the value 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Wait, you have right. You have to calculate for n two only. So why should be calculating for n one? You just have to calculate for n two. So what is the weight for n two? This is one. No, no, two. So to x, compute the x final x one out. multiply with x one plus x two times zero point two, and then x three into zero point five. Yeah, for the final, you have to calculate both n one and n two both. Yeah, correct. So should I solve this? Sorry, I'm not clear. 0.60. 0.60. 0. Okay, let me calculate this. So you have like 0. 0.6 multiply with 0. 0.9, and then you have 0. 0.1 into 0. 0.1, and then 0. 0.8 into 0. 0.2. This is you have 54. This is 0 0.01, and this is no, sir. It is for n1. No? This is for n1. No? Uh, ah, so to calculate for n2, right? Ah, uh, you have to calculate for n2 directly, right? So 0 0.6 and plus 0 0.02 and then plus 0 0.1, and you have added the bias, right? And then sure. this value you have to put it inside the sigmoid function. So you have 0 0.600, 0 0.02, and then 0 0.16, 0 0.10, and then 0. Point... No, I did this. Okay, this you don't have to add. So 0 0.62 and then 0 0.12. 0 0.74 if you are putting. Here, what are the value you are getting for that sigmoid function? So, sigmoid you will be able to calculate 1 plus e to the power minus 0 0.74. So, whatever the value you are getting, this will be your output of the N2. Okay. Is this clear? Yeah. So, we multiply the input uh, with the uh, weight of the second uh, neuron of the hidden layer, to, hidden layer right? Where the second? Okay, so I'll just make One it. the second, sorry, the hidden. Can you make the network? Okay, x one, x two, x three. You have, and then you have the hidden layer, and then this is the output. Okay, this is the output, and this is the hidden layer. Okay, so you have weight. So if you have to, this is n one, and this is n two. So if you have to get anything output of n two, what will you do? So whatever the weight is having given here, w one, w two, and w three is the weight. Let's for example. The output of this N2 will be what? X1 into W1 plus X2. And if you have base also, like bias also, then W2 plus X3 into W3 plus this bias. And this you'll be putting, you'll be getting this as a Y and then put it inside the sigmoid function. So 1 upon 
1 to the power n minus y and this will be your output of n1 and so this is basically w1 transport xi right ha huh. plus beta correct where plus w, beta. w transpose is wi transpose so there is so what are yeah. each of the neurons ha huh. okay and similarly you can calculate for y of this is n2 this you can calculate for y n1 and then do the summation and that will be your output values what value weight of in, input value weight of input so already not weight of input value but for the hidden layer all the neurons will be having some values right so this is for the hidden layer for the first neuron of the hidden layer first like you have only one hidden layer so this is the three value right so this is for a x1 this is for x2 and this is for x3 similarly this is for x1 x2 x3 i think so this is clear now right shall we move to the next yeah, question sir, just yeah just just uh, in one sec so uh, so the output would be the y uh, you know the y1 into uh, hmm. the w output yeah so y2 y into w output correct yeah so whatever the output let's for example here it is y4 and y5 So it will be y4 plus y n2 into w5 plus whatever the bias bias b1 yeah. yeah this will be your output because this is a linear function so whatever you are it's like identity function y equals to x okay so whatever the value you are getting okay. here will come out here okay but okay. it was if yeah. it was a different like mod function different uh, activation function you would have kept this uh, right right like that okay Yeah. Again, that uh, output n one plus n two, that output we will be putting into segment function again, right? This one. Yes. Not. No, 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 no. It's a. It's, it's a linear, linear, right? Yeah, that is linear no, no, function, no. right? No, it's a linear. Oh, so, see, ha. So the output After will be n one plus n two, right? No, no. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into. Uh, yeah, output of n one plus output of n two. Isn't that the? In no output. into into weight. You. Like you have to consider weights as well, right? Weight yeah. also has been given, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, whatever the value you are getting, and then you have to put in that activation function. But the here, the activation function itself is y equals to x. So whatever the value you are getting here, that you should be putting outside. Okay. Okay. So again, that sigma function we will not be using in the output. No, no. You you'll be given all this function, right? So for here, it what has been given here. One hidden layer with two neuron using sigmoid activation, mm -hmm. and output with one neuron using linear activation. Uh, in in the problem statement, you have also given an output. What is that for? Output is the <laughs> final output. This one, right? No, no. That is a weight. Down. Output weights. Output weights. Output weight has been given, right? Output weight. Oh, neuron. Okay. Output also has a neuron, right? One neuron. Yeah, yeah, okay. Weight has been given. Bias also been given. So all the things you will be doing same thing, same thing. Only you should be worrying about the activation function. For the output, most of the time you will be having a linear function. Okay. What was the answer, sir? For W four and W five. W four and W five is this one. The the weight zero point two and zero four. Just I gave it a simple name. So this was basically what W four and W five. Okay. Okay. Is it clear now to everyone? Should I repeat it? Uh, no, sir. But what is the sir, final uh, answer? What is the final answer? That uh, I didn't calculate. So you can calculate that. Uh, so sir, uh, uh, we calculated right. It was point seven four, and that you can put it inside the sigmoid function. So one upon one plus e to the power minus zero point seven four. So you can calculate this. What is the value you are getting? But this is only for N two, right? Ah, uh, this is for N two. Ah, zero point six seven one. Ah, for N for final, you have to do more struggle, like right? more what you can say calculation. Ah, uh, okay. sir, for final output, uh, uh, we require to calculate N one, N two, and uh, by depending upon the weights, we require to multiply, and uh, we require to add bias also. Right. Correct. Correct. The same step that you have followed for N two. Only the thing is the activation function here is sigma, so you kept it uh, the value and then calculated the sigma ball value. There it was linear, so y equals to x. So you just will be getting the same value. Sir, so, so we will add bias before putting in into sigma function or after putting it 
into the required function. Before, before. <laughs> Before, yeah, yeah. Then, sir, how how we are getting zero point seven two? Maybe oh, I would have done some mistake. No, no, it's seven four. Sorry. Zero point seven four. Yeah, four. Yes. Even we'll add it later. Seventy four, so you can't get. Yes. Okay. Is it done? Uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, only thing is that uh, we didn't use W4 and W5 while calculating N2. Ha, huh, you'll not be using. Yeah. If you have been to calculate output of N1, you'll not be using W, this, this all stuff. Right. They can only... give you some, so many information, but you don't have to use that, right? Right. And uh, while calculating output, we require to use W4 and W5. Everything right? you have to do. But if you have been asked to calculate the output of whole neural network, you should be using all the information that is in given. Right. Okay. Is it clear now, to everyone? Right, sir. I calculated. So n two is point seven two, right? Okay. So this is your input. Input is zero point six, zero point one, zero point two. Your weight. So your neural network first here, and this is n two with sigmoid function and bias also. And now this is the output. Now, if you have to calculate for n one, n one, I am just calculating for n one. Okay, so for n one, you will be calculating the weight is given there. Zero point nine is the weight. Okay, so you can see the weight here. Zero point nine into zero point six plus zero point zero point five nine. What what? Zero point five nine. Where? For for n one. Ah, okay. So and for n two, it is zero point. Into zero point two, sorry, zero point two. So this is what you are getting. Zero point five. Zero point five nine. Five nine. Okay. For n two, we were getting something zero point seven four. So we are missing bias for n. Bias, bias. Okay, no, bias no. also you have to add. Bias is zero point one. Similarly, you can add bias, and then you are getting this value. Now the yes. final output will be. The final. What is the weight? What was the weight given? Zero point two into zero point five nine plus zero point four into zero point seven four plus the bias. What is the value of bias? Zero point four. So this is the answer. Zero point six seven. Yeah, zero point six. Six. Hey, this is not seven four, man. This this should be putting sigma function. And then whatever the value you are getting, that you should be putting here, not that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. After putting sigma function, I am telling sir, zero point six. Okay. Okay. So after putting sigma function, if you are getting, then it's fine. Uh, for n one, it is zero point five nine. It's not point five nine. This is point four nine. No, okay. No, okay. I'm... Any any value. So calculation, you can't do it. Like okay, you can do the calculation part, but do it correctly in the exam first. Okay. So so the, the, n one you have to add the bias right plus point one also. Yeah yeah n one is added point one is added point and n two also this after adding we are getting this okay. So, sir, can you do it for final that like we have for n one and n two? Final we already you only told me n one for n one we got point five nine then we'll add multiply the no, weight. No, sir, like final for output also. This is output then. only right? This is output only. Okay. This we got oh. from n one. This we got from n two, okay. and then we have multiplied the weight, and okay. then added the bias, and this will be your final answer. Because the the later Output the linear function, what? Output is linear function. Yeah, yeah. Output is linear function only. Okay, sir. Okay, let's move to the third fourth question. I guess this is clear, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll do some problem from the previous week, and that is, I guess, week eight or seven. So this is naive base, and this all the values that has been given, and then you have to calculate something. So read the question first, and then tell me whether you are able to understand that or not. if you are solving this in the last revision session 
that means be prepared for this type of problem so it will be a difficult paper maybe so you can just so at least solve this type of problem wherever you are getting the graded practice or maybe previous term paper So all the probability values are given here. So you have some th three words, and if word is appearing in this mail, so let's for example you have some uh, different numbers of mail, and then out of that, the probability of getting spam mail is like 0.4, and probability of getting non-spam mail is 0.6. Okay, and now the word one, if that word one is there in the mail, okay, and that is spam. So the probability that the W one appears in a spam. Mail is 0.4. Similarly, for the W1 appears in the non-spam mail is what is the probability 0.05. Similarly, for WT also W2 also W3. So there are only three words. If you have a data set, if you have been given three words, that means you have just the three words. Okay, in the email, so you should you should not be thinking about what about the other words and all. So if you have been given whatever the stats like all the information. Think of that there are th that much like three, four, whatever the information is given, that much word only. You should not be worrying about the other words, and also it should be like written here also if you have if you are receiving a email where W one, W three, W three, W one, W two, W three, all the three uh, words are present and only these three words are available. So there is no none code for this error. So this is the assumption that you are making. Now you have to calculate that calculate probability. That whatever the new mail that you have got, this is the mail that you have got that consists of W one, W two, W three. So that will be classified as a spam. So what is the probability of that? So you basically you have to calculate what? Can somebody tell me what you have to calculate probability? What is the given thing? Words are given. Okay, so W one, W two, W three is given, and you have to calculate what? Yes. So that yes, it belongs yes. to yes. spam. Spam, right, sir. Okay, so that inform that probability value you have to calculate. How will you calculate that? So it's a base theorem. Bias, but yeah, naive base. Okay, what's the base theorem? That formula. I got it. It's a P W one given as P W one given as given as into P W two given as into E W three given as divided by all of it, sum of all. Okay, this should be here. It should be probability such that W one. So basically, the email, mail or email, whatever you want to do, and the upper part should be what probability? Email e e given as spam. Given spam, yeah. Multiply with probability of spam, right? Yeah. What will the other thing? So, what can you write? So, probability of getting email it can be spam and it can be non-spam, right? Can be spam or can be non-spam. So, probability email of non-spam. Give him a spam. Multiplication of probability of spam, and similarly you can write it for probability of the mail, non-spam. Mail and non-spam multiply with the probability of non-spam. So the upper part will be what the probability of mail given is spam multiplication of probability of spam okay can you calculate now the now mail consists of how many words word 1 word 2 word 3 given spam into probability of spam similarly you can do it for here also probability of Word one, word two, word three, given spam, multiplication of probability of spam. Plus, similarly, you can do for non-spam also. Word one, word two, word three, non-spam, given probability of non-spam. And this you already know that this is totally independent, so you can write it in this form also. Given spam, multiplication of probability of because W one. Word is independent of W two, so you can write it like that. Probability of W three given is spam, multiplication of probability of spam, and you can write it whatever I have written here. So basically, why? So you can write it why? Can you calculate it now? Is this clear to you? Or should I repeat it? Did you understand the question first? Tell me. 
yes sir clear is clear right uh, can, sir, can you can you explain the denominator yeah so how do you calculate so this email how do you, what's the formula that you get if you have to calculate probability such that the given mail it belongs to spam so basically you write it there so see this is your sum half part okay and here it is full right so you can write it like this also x upon x plus y okay this x is what probability such that the mail that you have got is belongs to spam multiplication with the spam okay and y is what probability that the mail that you have got belongs to non spam and multiplication of the non spam okay Okay. okay. No, I, and I just confused. Uh, you know the probability of, uh, you know W one, W two, W three. How, how we can okay. interpret as an email? Where, where, where? So yeah, so that email now, whatever the email that you have got, that you have to classify that as a spam or non-spam. That consists of only this W one, W two, W three. Hey, you go on. Oh, okay. that's it. Let's for example, this is hey, you won or congratulations something. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. Three words. So you have considered that three word consist like your mail consists of only three words itself. Okay. Okay. Got. Alright, everyone got it right. Uh, so the but the denominator part last part. Can you please come down please? Hmm. Uh, this one that why that p uh, p probability of w1 w2 w3 uh, the same thing you can write it right probability of w1 given is multiplication of probability uh -huh. of w2 given is spam Pro probability of w0 so this is what that's why i told now this is this you can think as a whole x and then the, the, the lower part will be this is again x this one and this one is same so this you can write it like x upon x plus y Okay, and your x is the probability that the, all the three words. So x is basically w1, w2, w3, one, two, three belongs to spam multiplication of probability of spam, and y will be for non-spam. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can calculate it, and then you can calculate the value. I don't know what's the value, but okay, if you calculate, you'll get the value. Okay, this type of problem you can expect in the paper. And then you have a decision tree questions. Okay, so you want to solve or, 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 or okay, so we will solve. 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 Yeah. Which one? If it is, if it is important. Decision so. tree. Decision tree. Okay. So decision tree. Let's for example, in the starting we were having some positive and negative. The starting itself, it belongs the label of the five hundred. Can be email anything else. Okay, anything. So five hundred words or data set. You were having positive class, and for the 300 data set, it was negative class. And then you ask some questions, okay? Maybe on the basis of some question, it got split. For yes, you have some 300 label, positive label, and 100 negative label. And for no, you have positive 200 and negative 200. And then you have been asked to calculate the entropy of x, entropy of y, entropy of z, and calculate the information gain for this feature. Okay, how will you calculate that? What is the formula for information gain? How do you calculate? The information uh, entropy for this x. What is the formula? Uh, First, tell you the entropy of that, balance uh, minus probability such that the label belongs to positive class. What is the probability of that? Five by eight. Five by eight. Five by eight for the negative class. It is three by eight. Five by eight. So how will you calculate here? Five by eight. No, here, here, what should we write here? Here it says entropy of x. There's a formula, for, formula minus for, p, minus, for minus p log p. Minus p log p. Okay, minus 3. Sir, can you, can you tell the formula? Uh, formula, what's the formula for entropy? Minus of p log p plus p 1 minus p. p. Minus uh, of p log, one minus log, log p. p. Yeah. Correct? You do the summation of all, right? And the log you have base two, correct? Oh, it is it is same as that uh, entropy loss. Okay. Okay. So how do you calculate the entropy? Like here, how will you calculate? What is the probability of in this section? What is the probability of positive label? Three 
थ्री बाई फोर यू कैन कैलकुलेट राइट माइनस थ्री बाई फोर लॉग थ्री बाई फोर सिमिलरली यू कैन कैलकुलेट माइनस वन बाई फोर लॉग वन बाई फोर ओके दिस इज द एंट्रॉपी फॉर दिस एक्स सिमिलरली यू कैन कैलकुलेट फॉर ई वाई ऑल्सो वट इज दैट सो वन बाई टू लॉग वन बाई टू माइनस वन बाई टू लॉग वन बाई टू वट इज द वैल्यू यूल बी गेटिंग दिस यू कैन कैलकुलेट राइट दिस नो कैलकुलेशन हेयर वन बाई टू इन टू माइनस वन करेक्ट सो वन अपॉन टू प्लस वन अपॉन टू सो दिस विल बी गेटिंग वन Can you go up, sir? Can you show the tree, sir? What? Ah, uh, the decision tree. Sir, it is two hundred by two hundred, na. So both are one by two log one by two minus. Ah, two. How much is two hundred by two hundred? It's two hundred by four hundred. Four hundred, right? Two hundred by four hundred. We'll be having probability as one by two, right? Yeah. But I wrote one by two log one by two. All the base are two hundred, right? Two hundred by two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred by two hundred. 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 Two
okay nothing there is no new no importance to the what are the class of that no importance to that gamma is just the weight value that you are getting weighted average you calculate right how do you calculate weighted average no why it is 3 by 800 not by 500 by 800 because you are classifying yes category is 300 and no category is 500 so you are considering the ratio between yes and no that is 300 by 800 is that the understanding or if it is like 500 by 800 also okay you be. just tell me if you have 1000 data point and out of that 1000 data point i am not bothering about the classes for yes i am getting 600 data point doesn't matter what's the class of this 600 what's the label of this 600 i am getting 4 what is the gamma for this 6 by 4000 600 by 1000 right so this is 6000 so what the point of this category, can be that label positive is like 500 and minus is 100 that doesn't no, matter to you right? that i am not telling i am telling on the yes category is 600 now so that 600 by 1000 ha that's it that's what i i was asking there that in that ah, case, that's it there is no point of uh, that okay okay then my bad i was understanding something okay so what are explaining so yeah so if you have to calculate the entropy of x you can calculate the entropy it's a basic mm -hmm. simple formula so you have to just calculate the summation of minus p log p and the p that you should be calculating for each label so for let's for example for the one label positive class it's the probability is 3 by 4 So you'll be asking minus three by four log three by four, and then you have to add right. So the other part is what? So for the negative class, what is the probability? Hundred upon four hundred, log hundred upon four hundred, one by four. Okay. Then you can calculate the entropy for x. Similarly, you can calculate the entropy for y. And if you have been asked to calculate the information gain, then there is a formula for that. Information gain basically you calculate the entropy for your parent. So what is the parent for this two child? The parent is here, right? How do you calculate the entropy? So entropy you can directly write as five upon eight log five upon eight minus minus three upon eight log three upon eight. Correct. And this is what you calculate. And if you have to, and then subtract the so parent for the parent you can calculate the entropy, and then gamma gamma I told you in the ex first the weighted number you are getting in ex x. Okay, for the y, uh, yes answer. Okay, and similarly you can do it for the one minus gamma times e y. Is it clear now? Ah, uh, so e x is the yes label and e y is the no label. Ha. Huh. Okay. Okay, I'm giving. No, no, one... no, no, no. The question, the question. Uh... Ah, question answer. No, no. It's the not answer the to the question. Yeah, yeah. It's not the label. It's not a label. It's the question for the answer. Yes, you have this many numbers. Label. This is positive label. That's why I'm saying positive and negative, not yes no. Yes no is the answer for that. Okay, question. Basically, what it means is that there are three hundred positive labels okay, from the five hundred, okay. which are for which the answer uh, is yes. Huh, I have hundred data points now, and out of that hundred data points, the label for those the label is some. Plus one and label is minus one. It can happen, right? So this is fifty fifty. And then I am for some answer F one something. I have three answers for that. I don't have two answer. I have three answer. So this is getting split in three part, and it can happen, right? So for this X, this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and out of this hundred, I have some fifty. I have asked some question, and that. Question can answer can be three, right? Three things can be the answer. I have here sixty data point, and out of that sixty, I have some forty class positive. What is that? Positive plus one, and twenty as minus one. And here I can have twenty, and here I can have twenty. Okay, and this out of twenty, I have some positive one ten and minus one ten. And then here also I I can have some fifteen plus one. And five minus one. Now tell me what is the value of gamma for this? Sixty. Sorry, sixty. by hundred. Ha. Huh, right. Zero point six. Zero point two. And here it is zero point two. Correct. Yes. Yes. And if you have to calculate the entropy, how will you calculate the entropy? Same formula. Forty upon sixty. Log forty yeah. upon sixty. Minus four. Minus forty. Minus. Every time you can write minus, right? And then twenty yeah. upon sixty and twenty twenty upon. 60 log 20 upon 60. Similarly, you can calculate for this 10 log. No, we we 
No, but we have to multiply by uh, that gamma, right? Ha, huh, this is entropy. Just the entropy. If you have to calculate the entropy, oh, just the entropy. Oh, okay. Okay. For the information gain, only well, you should be multiplying with the gamma. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, Understood. why you? Uh... What? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Is it clear now? Whoever was yeah. asking, and this is very important. So I'm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it clear now? Uh, so for. For the information gain in this case, we we have to multiply the entropy of sixty by point six, entropy of twenty by point two, uh -huh. entropy of for twenty by point gain, two. Yeah, and, yeah. and let's for example, you have entropy for this as some random number, some random number is some beta. Okay. Yeah. So how will you calculate beta minus? For first case, you calculated something e x times zero point six. Zero point six was the gamma, right? And then zero point two yeah. times e y, then zero point two times e z. Okay, yeah. this should so, be your. So here, no, no, no. Here, like here also, beta into uh, the entropy of parent. E why, into why, why? Beta. But beta is, is the exact value of this entropy for this. So there will be some entropy for this also, right? If this is plus oh, one, okay, level, okay, okay, okay. That is okay, okay. that. Is that, that is the entropy. Hmm. Minus minus one okay. upon two log one upon two, correct? Okay. This okay. is your beta. Yeah. That yeah. beta is one here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the beta is the entropy of parent. Ah, uh, 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 this yeah. is what I was saying. Is... Parent into entropy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is this clear now to everyone? Yes. Sir. Let's move. Okay, so I guess I have done all the questions. Okay, one more question. I'll just give you one. Okay, I have, if I'll give you one covariance matrix. One by n x x. Tell me whether it's a valid or not. Okay, how will you check whether the matrix that I gave you is a valid or not? Check this is valid or not. How will you check? Uh, Positive, semi-definite. Just semi-definite. Ah, ah, no. See, if you have giving C is equal to one four. One zero three nine zero zero two. Calculate and tell me the value. Is it a valid covariance matrix? But no, it's not. No, it is not. It should, it, it should be symmetric. It be symmetric. No, it should be symmetric. So this is a cardinal. For the cardinal matrix, okay. So you can change for positive semi-definite also. That is fine. If you have been given some cardinal, huh. that that also will be checking. Okay. So basically, it should be C. Because you see, transpose here, it's not equal. Right? Okay, so this is done, I guess, from my side. So if you have any issue from this whole question, you can just ask me. Otherwise, sir, one one question in neural network. Okay, so just a one? small, uh, the same question. I just uh -huh. want to modify a bit, it a bit. So yeah, instead yeah. of n two, we are uh, considering that there is one more hidden layer. One And more neural hidden... network. Neural one more uh, neuron, right? Uh, no, one more hidden layer. Okay, I can have one more hidden layer. Okay, let's for example, I have x one here, x two here, x three, and I have hidden layer h one. This is n one one. This is n one two, and I have h two here. N two one, and okay, n two two. Okay. So so now, if we are asked to calculate the output of n two two, okay. Then, then whatever the value you are getting, let's for example you are getting some some value n one one itself after putting the bias and getting the sigma value, okay? Now yeah. n one one. So let's for example n one one is your value and weight is w one for his w one and w two is the weight, okay? For n two two, so plus w two multiply with n one two plus whatever the bias it has. Let's for example bias is b one, okay? And then the sigmoid function. Let's for example, it is sigmoid again. So what is the value you are getting? Put it inside the sigmoid function, and that will be your output. Uh, okay, okay, sir, so, got it. So I was just confused that whether we need to consider inputs again. No, we just have to consider what comes out from uh, that. No, no, no. What is the value, the value you are getting here? What are, that should be considered. Okay. Previous question. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, sir. Thank okay. You. One question. Sir, in the last question, covariance. Uh, I got missed sir, that one, sir. Covariance. Okay, for the covariance, what should be symmetric? Uh, correct. Okay, C is equal to C transpose. We require to verify, and we can say that, right? No, 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 no. One more thing. What is that? One more thing that should be checking. Positive so semi-definite. Semi-positive semi definite. Oh, positive semi-definite. 
Okay, what is that positive semi definite? Eigen value should Eigen be value zero or means non non negative. It should be zero or positive. Okay. For kernel also, you should be checking both the things. Okay. Symmetric and positive semi definite. Okay. If you have two, let's for example, if you have two cross two matrix, this is two one three four. Is this? Ah, uh, this is not even no. Okay, this is three. Now, this is also not. Is this? Yes, you are writing. Sir. How will you check? Do not calculate eigen values for this. This is positive, right? Sir, your One. screen is frozen. Either either your screen is frozen or. Oh, uh, trying to You are saying two one three four the matrix. Oh, okay. You can't see. Okay, let me do it and then just do it again. Now, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. So tell me for this two, three, three, four. This is not. This is not determinant. How did you check that? Determinant is negative. Okay. Determinant is negative. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Tell me this minus one, three, 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 and then minus ten. Oh, it's not. My first first value should be positive. Correct. Yeah. So, so for any matrices, first check for the first value and then check the the determinant. If both are positive, then you need not to check the like eigen values. Okay. Let's close this now. Okay. Then whatever the question I have discussed, seven, eight, five, six. So those are pretty important, and to solve it from wherever you are getting this type of problems. Okay. Maybe and try to solve the previous year paper. Week one to week eight, what will be? Uh, like as I already told in some session, one session. Uh, I guess week. Sir, maybe I'm missing. Uh, uh, sir, where, where, where can we get the previous year's papers? Previous year paper, mock paper is there, no? That is previous year paper. Oh, that that yeah. is. Oh, that that itself. Is. Okay, fine. So, so what you told? Is sir, there is one one question. A positive and second was. And those paper has already been solved by TA. So if you have, like, you can go through that session. Like the recording is already been available. Uh, uh, sir, there is one question in Entum mock third question, practice two. Okay. Sir, uh, what was the second condition, sir? The first condition was A should be positive, and second was. Second was determinant should be positive. Okay. Or if you are not uh, comfortable with that, you can check the eigen values. Okay, check the eigen values. Uh, if you are able to calculate the eigen values, that is uh, zero or negative. Sorry, positive. Then it is like positive semi. Okay. Sir, there is one question related to tree decision tree. Maybe you discuss. So if you have discuss, let me know. I will check the recording. If you have a uh, parent node and if you have two to three node before that, so how can you calculate the information gain? Is in our example, we check only two nodes are there, one parent node and two different edge. If below there are also nodes available, then how can we check total information gain? Can you tell how me can again? I can I repeat that again? Okay, I'll just. If you have a parent node and uh -huh. we also have uh, two node below that. First, we ask one question. Again, after that, we also again have a question. Means after that, also that yeah, they, they split it. Yeah, no, nobody will ask me. Even if you are able to calculate for one parent, that is well and good. Okay. Okay. Information gauge is not asked like you should not be calculating for the starting parent. It's not like that. So for the children, whatever the see, if you have let me again. So it's like I'm already. This is the last question I'll be taking. Okay. Uh, sir, only one small question which I asked. Okay. So there is one thing they have given some values and they have asked that which of the following activation could be used. 
okay so how to determine it so the answer they are given is either relu or sigmoid but i don't remember for the this. neural network huh? yeah 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 uh, so for the for whatever you have been taught you have been just taught about the sigmoid i guess uh, relu yes. also not been taught uh, no they, they have they just ask, but mentioned okay. they just mentioned relu but uh, uh, so, nothing yeah so maybe yeah so this is what like for the sig for the neural network you should be using sigma or relu only yeah so relu i have read online it's like max of 0 z it's like that, just just the straight line ha huh. but i don't know why did they ask the but i don't think that they'll be asking for this this term uh if, if like okay, relu is relu is you you know uh, like when you get a negative answer it 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 just you know um, Uh, okay like that is fine you know zero and the uh, positive is positive and and if you want to this... see the yeah go ahead sir go ahead no i was just saying that this has not been taught right if it's not been taught i don't think so they'll be asking you so sigma only has been taught relu is just the they have used that relu you should be using and then in the deep learning only will be going through so okay uh, so okay sir yeah i saw that question it's not that like just X axis, but it's not been taught, so there's no point of touching that. They won't okay. be asking. That is for sure. At least for this paper, there's like they won't be asking about anything about the real activation function. Only the sigmoid linear. Those those you are already aware of that. Yeah. Okay. So for any decision tree, okay, this is a decision tree. It started from here. This is a parent, and then splitted. Okay, why yes, and then again you have splitted again, and then you have been asked. Okay, so. If you have been asked to calculate the information for for this split, you will be calculating. This should be your x and this is y, and this is your parent. You should not be going here. Okay. If you have to calculate the information again, you should just be uh, calculating for this, this, and this, and then you can calculate the same formula with the same formula. Is this clear now? Yes, sir. Is there is a c z right, and then you can calculate at e z minus whatever the gamma here you have gamma time. Ex minus one minus gamma time e y. You should not be going here. See, and there are can be some possibility that see there can be. Let's for example, you have a decision tree. Okay, so I, this is the last thing important for the paper. This is the decision tree. So there can be a lot of questions, like right? question one, question two, question three. And in the exam, if they have give you two questions, okay. Let's for example, on the feature f one, it is splitting like this. And on the basis of F two, it is splitting like this. So, which one, the from where the decision tree will split? How will you calculate that? So whichever has, which whichever has more more information gain from there. More information gain. Yeah, more information gain that will split. Yeah. So this is so for that if the, you are getting that type of problem, so that's why I told you this exam will be having some calculation based where you will be spending a lot of time in math part. But the formulas and all should be already aware. So at least whatever the time you have, solve problems from decision tree, so tenth week, twelfth week, and then decision tree, naive base, all those questions try to solve so that in the exam it should be like it will be easier for you to solve. Okay, so fifty percent of the question are can like conceptual, fifty percent like more than fifty, even fifty five percent of them are calculation based. So you can get some. You can stop and then like, all those sim things are simple, but the only thing is like the calculation. If you do one mistake, you are gone, and all the questions are like six, seven marks. So will be there's a high weight of losing. Okay, so practice at least some questions from whatever I told. At least do that one. So that I can assure you, you can perform pretty nice. So whatever I told in the like the last three session, I gave you. Some questions that you should be practicing. Okay, last session also I told you. Even last to last session also today also. Okay, and after that also, if you have a doubt, you can just ask me, discuss or mail me about that. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks everyone for joining the session. We'll close this, and for the previous time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go through the. Thank you, sir. Sir, the previous session solvability is on twenty sixth session, right? Twenty sixth. Ah, I I haven't uh, seen that, but it's like I guess twenty sixth one. Okay, is it fine to everyone? Thank you, sir. Okay.
all the best for your exam we'll meet again maybe thank you sir okay thanks thanks everyone thank you thank you bye thank you sir uh, for some week you can practice ya chaitanya for some week you can practice grade practice but for 12th week 10th week you don't no need to practice those I just saw the previous term paper. You don't have much time also to go through. You don't have only one course, right? MLT. So you can just practice previous term paper. Whatever the type of question concept, those are important. That has been told by me and Ram in the revision session. So, Thank you, sir. I'll just stop it. Yeah. So I'll just stop the recording and then.